Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ninjago Cast, Masters of Pod Jitsu. I am your sensei, Nessa. I'm Sakoto. I'm AJ. I'm Josh. And I'm Bendo. And the dojo is now open again. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We're going to have a fun time today talking about Season 2 of Ninjago Dragons Rising, recently released on Netflix, but not for every country. It's not in the UK Netflix, right, AJ? No, it is not. <laughs> That's so strange. Not even Season 1 is on there, so... Wasn't that supposed to not be the case? <laughs> or, like... Was it released in some other service that I'm not aware of? It it probably oh. is. It's the same in Germany where it's released on Togo, but not on Netflix yet. And oh. A in Netflix. Yeah, I, I see it... that here. It's ITVX. Yeah, no, it's just ITV. ITVX oh. is the like the online streaming. ITV is the channel that it's airing on. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Probably see well. ITV. It's a bummer. Um, you are you have watched it though through your own means, and yeah. we will we will have a fun discussion today about it. Uh, I see a comment in the chat from Ninjago is awesome. I see that LJ is still lost to the merge. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> um, Rip LJ. Dragonic Titan been following these guys for over 10 years, and I think this is the first time I managed to catch a podcast live. <laughs> <laughs> you get those comic well, comments a lot. <laughs> well, we, we should really start announcing early. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, there's there's no time like the present. I'm glad you're here. We get to talk about fun Ninjago. We have 53 viewers right now, so clearly people are excited. Thank you guys for checking us out today. Uh, before we get into the meat of today's show, I just want to do a few like plugs. So forgive me for for advertising to you uh if you do like this content please consider subscribing to keep the peace we have three more episodes and then jago cast reacts to dragons rising season two part one to release and then we have a few episodes left of our dreams reacts to also release oh, yeah. which were like yeah. very outdated uh or mm -hmm. very like not outdated but we're very behind on apologies for that uh, we have a few other Ninjago casts we're going to be doing in the next few weeks because there's like a, a backlog of topics that we find interesting that we're going to be discussing. And then past that point, we also have a bunch of set reviews that have been in the can for a while that we're going to be hoping to release soon enough. So there is going to be some content coming to keep the peace. If you want to subscribe, to be stay tuned when that comes out. Additionally, you can check us out on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash the TTV channel. And that, that way you can see our notifications for when new videos and live streams go live. Finally, last thing, if you want to support us in any way other than, you know, on YouTube where there's like super chats and such, you can also check us out on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash TTV channel. For as low as $1 a month, you can join our Patreon only Discord server where we talk about Ninjago, Monkey Kid, lots of fun Lego related stuff. And it's a fun place to be. But that's all the shilling for today. Thank you guys very much to coming uh, and listening to us today. Uh, Ninjago, Dragons Rising. It is out. Season two is out. We have been releasing our reactions recently. I saw a few people earlier in the chat wondering why we're doing the podcast before the reactions are out, because there's three more episodes left to be released. And the reason, plain and simply, is just scheduling it's very difficult for us to find time to schedule to do these podcasts because we're all so busy nowadays. And we have multiple other topics, like I mentioned, that we kind of want to talk about. So we were just like, we've already seen it all. Why would we wait when most of our audience has also already seen it all? You know, it is. we do mention in part 10, oh yeah, we'll be doing a podcast soon. So, <laughs> you know, sorry about that, but realistically there's no sense in waiting if we had the free time to do it today but rest assured um the next episode will be released tomorrow of the jungle cast reacts guys dragons rising is really good 
It's so yes. good. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's so Blood good. So it good. even it even warmed AJ's cold dead heart and, uh, <laughs> and brought her back to us. Performed a miracle. <laughs> were you ever you weren't on any of the Dragons Rising season one discussions, were you? You just gave your thoughts on like the art stream? Yeah. It would it were very brief thoughts, if I recall correctly. Mostly give just us, like, fun of me liking Kai, but give us the catch up of like where you're at right now because you know, you, you watched Dragon Dragon season one and that you thought was good, but now season two is what's made you actually want to be on like a podcast again. So yeah. tell us tell us your thoughts on both if you want to. Um I'll I'll do season one real quick. Um yeah, it's good. Anyway, season two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um I feel awkward going first. This feels like <laughs> You were <are> absolutely <laughs> freaking out about the animation. That was one thing I'm, I just like to remember. I'm always freaking out about animation, to be fair. I'm a nerd, but it but especially it's so good. Specifically with the the fight choreography, they're they're just all of the action scenes are really really well done, and um, you can feel the weight behind like impacts. Yeah, because you work yeah. With like camera movements and you know how many frames they're using between hits, like they're just they're thinking really creatively about how to convey uh, just just how hard. <laughs> the hits are and it's it's really effective like it's it's so good i could go on forever about it i feel like wild brain era fights have just been good but i feel like this kind of cranked it up to the the next level um yeah i, I don't know i'm a big fan of it. I, I think a big part of it is the direction as well like it feels very like um a lot of the shots are a lot more interesting and a lot more um dynamic than yep. they were before like we we of course have still like the awesome one shots but um, yeah, I mean, even with the way they much. cut and the way the camera movements are and how they diversify focus and and how they choose to like frame everything i think that really helps a lot in terms of selling the action even more i also oh, yeah. think the it's not the visuals and the the sounds for the like the new techniques they use like shatter spin and the rising dragon form they they give it just like they 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 just look and feel very powerful. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a good way to get people hyped because yeah, I was I was very cynical at first, and I mentioned it on the reacts. I'm like, oh yeah, they're they're learning a new technique for like the 87th time. Yeah, Gone. I do have some thoughts about that. I want to talk about, but I don't know. But it, it 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 won me over purely by like presentation by like the end of it, mm. and I was pretty much vibing with everything else. The lighting too this yes, season if you're talking purely about like production values like ninjago just keeps looking better and um i posted some screenshots um for everyone watching i have a whole lot of screenshots that i'm gonna play during the <laughs> podcast today but um especially like the scenery and landscape shots they looked so good like the shadow dojo and the the area where they're training with eagle and uh ron too yeah. that the the that's such cool locations, and then like once the blood moon is there, it looks yeah, even once cooler. Once the blood moon starts yeah. <laughs> rising, the atmosphere is so good. They did a great job of just portraying like the the atmosphere and the tone of of everything going on. It's pretty insane. The ice master in the comments says, "Let's go, AJ," and then Davo, AJ always being pulled into the show in one way or another. <laughs> <Hello>? <laughs> You can't escape. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you even like uh, you like Kai now, which is funny. You know, <laughs> I can't wrap my head around it. Like, I mean, I'm with you, AJ. I was Kai's strongest hater. Kai's <laughs> <No. laughs> so yeah. likable. It's but actually he's so good hard now. to find people who don't like him. Yeah, like I, I remember talking to my some of my other friends about it who don't even watch the show i just sometimes i'll talk to them about ninjago and i was like telling them the other night like man i like kai now and they all gasped and they're like <laughs> you always talk about how much you hate him and i'm like yeah i know he makes me laugh now <laughs> That's how good i really want to figure out like what changed 
because oh. I see some people talking on like Twitter about it. Like, what I, exactly I, is different? I think for me, and I, I, I tweeted that in reply to to one of those tweets is, one is they put them in a dynamic where he kind of is challenged in his like reckless ways. So Wildfire is even more reckless than him, so he kind of has to be calm, even though it's against his like characterization. And yeah. second is, for me, a big part why he's a lot more likable is that he's not as incompetent and not as selfish in yeah. in what he does. And that doesn't really, like, it doesn't change his character, it's just more the situations they put him in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. a big part of it, too, is the show is just, like, a lot funnier now. Like, I feel like the comedy in Dragons Rising just lands a lot better, and that really services a character like Kai. Who has yeah. like really funny comedy when he's allowed to? I, I was dying like really a well. lot. <laughs> yeah, like it. It just goes like just the whole comedic tone and vibe of this of both seasons we've had so far just so much better than I feel like a lot of seasons prior where the comedy kind of usually takes a back seat. But they've been doing like a lot of just like really funny bits and like scenes like with the Cloud Kingdom. Where they like, we want you to work the same amount, just be funner about it. <laughs> you gotta be funner. <laughs> gags and stuff that they do. And it's it's really impressive considering they're able to balance that with the tone of like all the character angst that's happening at the same time. And uh, it feels natural and it's just, it's really funny. We got a comment from Sanctioned Skull. It says, Meso is king. No, you're a king. You have skull in your name. You're Base. the Bone King. From, oh from yeah, the exactly. Corset. Fan, fan favorite character, Bone King. Hey, it was funny in season one. <laughs> <laughs> Gujan SC says the visuals of the season are nuts. I rewatched a season eleven episode today, and legitimately, it looked like a low budget fan production. And and that looked good at the time. <laughs> It's yeah. it just keeps uh, getting make better. Animation looked good at the time. Do you wanna do you wanna stick with that, Sakoda? You mean the alleyway scene? <laughs> I mean, it's, iconic alleyway scene. It still it still looked a lot better than like seasons one, two, let's say yeah. seven. Yeah, I'm more thinking say of the, like the the Forbidden Swinjitsu fight scene. That's like what, what I kind of go to. Wild Brain, what they lacked in like texture work, they made up for in like particle effects and color. Yeah. So they had a lot of really like the bright colors that popped, especially in fights. Uh, but now they've just, I mean, they're just firing on all cylinders on everything. The lighting is like incredible. The rendering yeah. is incredible. Like particle effects, I remember animation. Last season, people were concerned that the animation took a, like was going to take a step down because of all the budget being used for like the the scenery and the lighting and stuff and like nah. dragons rising nope. season one had a few moments where like the animation was really good i thought it was pretty decent like the whole way through but like it wasn't as impressive as before but this season is just like yeah no you're getting even better animation than you probably expected yeah i think the big and, thing uh, in season it one also was looks gorgeous there were some like clipping issues um season one had the most animation errors i think yeah. i've seen in, like there uh, are still people. some in season two i especially noticed there are a, a bit few more weird errors in season two. when i took I the screenshots notice. but yeah it's a it's not many and it's not a big deal yeah ninjago is awesome so the alleyway scene it's like kind of a meme at this point it's it's an episode the first episode of season 11 the fire chapter when the ninja are like looking for things to do there's a scene where they're like running along the street and then they all like go into an alleyway and like they're looking for something that isn't there they're like oh there's nothing here man i wanted i want like an adventure and the alleyway has like no texture the lighting is like flat and they're all running in the exact same like stilted slow way and uh it, it just looks very very bad um and it was in one of the first trailers or like preview clips for season yeah. 11 so <laughs> it was kind of an unfortunate like and that was look. also like i think that trailer leaked like on canadian tv and it was like ungraded footage and yeah, it was like very pixely but yeah <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not a great first impression considering people were nervous about the change in studio but what you gonna do um so i don't even really know where to start there's so much good stuff here like i legitimately have no clue um this season what i think is interesting about it and this is something that a lot of people have been discussing in the community over the last like week 
yeah, there's a big plot line here about like, oh, a ritual to bring back like evil people from some realm that are going to like destroy the world or something. So I don't want to say the stakes are like low. The stakes are very high. However, there is a lot of focus put on small character moments and emotions and a lot of the stress that people are under and a lot of the insecurities that people have. And because of that, even though the stakes are like gigantic, it feels like a very personal season. And I think it really deserves a lot of like praise for that. Um, because everyone has like a little, a little something, something going on. Yeah. Uh, except for Nia, who really doesn't, but. And Zane. And Zane. Cole, Cole has something going on. A he's little bit. His, yeah. He's protecting oh, yeah. his replacement family. But like the, the, the three people I would say are kind of like the stars is, uh, is Lloyd, Aaron, and Kai. <laughs> really? I feel they're like the big three for this part one. Lloyd being haunted by his visions and like having horrible insomnia and is like unable to sleep. Aaron, who definitely is like going through it. I feel like we absolutely got our wish to have like an Aaron focused season. That is what this is. Yeah. And then Kai, who's like under the pressure, especially near the end. So like, yeah, he's the only one who had stuff, who, who had a promising showing and he has to step up and save everyone. And surprisingly, yeah. Bond's line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though her like, arc is mostly in the flashback, but still. Uh, I was not expecting that at all. I'm a bit yeah. real. I thought, I thought she was just like a gag character. Same. <laughs> but uh, I mean, hey, I'm down. You know, I like her character a lot. I thought she was hilarious in season one. And the backstory is really unique. I think we definitely should talk about that, and we will, because Bonzel is like very instrumental to this season. Um, Little Animal asks, what storyline do you think Aaron is heading down? Well, that's kind of the big subject, I'd say. Uh, I personally am a little nervous, because in the past, I have had a habit of thinking things are going to go a certain way and really banking on it and then being very disappointed when they don't go that way. I remember with the ice chapter, I was like 99% certain that Zane was going to be like benched from the team and like leave the show. And I was like, there's no reason that they would be teaching Nia how to do ice if they weren't going to have her be the Zane replacement when they have to like kill him as like the ice emperor. And, well, I definitely had egg on my face after that one. <laughs> yeah. So when we're making predictions, I'm going to try not to get over-invested in any particular kind of idea. But I'm pretty sold on the Aaron goes evil route, or at least, like, becomes a bad guy. I think yeah. it, I think we can say at least there will be, like, the temptation um, there for him to, like, yes. search for a different teacher or go, like, down the easy path of, like evil power <laughs> there's yeah. no way it will be permanent nor should it be but i mean it'll definitely happen i expect something very similar to like uh vakama in the fifth bionic so yeah, the, yeah the fifth bionicle year for those who know that but better <laughs> but better hopefully because that was a bad plot point i mean Lego there's already does not have a good history with there's already like, more set up than there was for vakama <laughs> yeah but i don't know AJ, you did you get a lot from Aaron's arc? How did you feel it was handled? Um, I I'm I like the the direction of going with it, right? Like I'm excited for that. Um, the only the only real complaint I had, which is is complaint I had about season one, is that like they're really they feel the need to mention it every single episode yeah. like he has to have like one line of dialogue where it's just repeating the same thing so by the time it like it came to him kind of getting upset i couldn't i was just kind of like okay because it, it, he'd said it so many times my brain was just sort of like i <laughs> i don't want to keep hearing the same thing over and over again you know like so i got old after a while 
Yeah, yeah. like, I, I understand it was, like, he only said, like, one thing like, every, every episode, but that's my point. Like, if you just keep hearing it, like, the same line, it's kind of like, I get it. I get what he's, like, that's his arc at the minute. I just don't feel like we needed it all yeah. the time. Like, we already know. <laughs> um, that was that was really my only complaint. It's just, like, a little too much on the dialogue front. You could just show it in other means through, like, the animation or expression or things. Because he was showing it in that as well. It's just, I don't think the... the I feel like the dialogue was unnecessary and the frequency. Yeah, like, <laughs> obviously say it, like, once or twice, but we don't need it like, every single episode. We don't, it's a bit unnecessary. It kind of just uh, it's just, you know, um, I, I don't really know how... I'm sure the work. logic is that they were trying to show that he was being driven to, like, a breaking point. Yeah, and like he was trying to put on a brave face, but it was getting like harder and harder too. When I over the season, when I rewatched the episode, I also kind of noticed it more that like how often they mentioned it in those first couple of episodes, and then like I feel like once the training begins, the actual training with the dragon, it's a lot more natural. You you see more that he's frustrated that it's not working, and then like it comes to the whole situation where he gets like downgraded by Eagled, um. But in the early episodes, it's very much like it, he just talks about it so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it would have been more natural if, if, you know, the other characters are, like, not having a problem with their fights and he's, you know, falling behind. I think that there are moments, because I, I, I don't disagree. I think it's definitely true. But I feel like there are moments where it is done very well and very naturally. And my one of my personal favorite moments of the season, I feel, is very low-key. But it's uh, it is the grappling hook scene. Oh yeah, I was about to mention that one. Yeah. Yeah. The grappling hook scene is like a favorite of mine because the grappling hook is like Aaron's thing, yeah. and then isn't it Sora that just like has made it everybody so... grappling hooks? And yeah, then the grappling they... hooks are just used on everything from that point on. Like, yeah, and then so it's also like these are I made grappling hooks for everyone, and they work with our elemental yeah. powers. <laughs> 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 this is really good moment where he's just kind of like standing there and the camera is like behind him and you're just kind of like watching everybody like go crazy with theirs and it's like yeah. bright and flashy yeah. like elements I think... and they don't really they, they don't even focus on him they don't even show him like having like a sad face but you you know you could infer <laughs> yeah and i think what generally they are doing very well i mean it's clear that they're setting up some kind of like conflict with Eren and sora um but I've, no one of them is like acting like like overly mean or doing something out of character or anything. Like everything Sora does, you can kind of like you get why she does it. It's either like it's smart for the team, or it's with good intentions, or she actually does it like to help to try to help Eren. Mm -hmm. But it still creates a conflict, so it it's very natural, and I think it's very well written. That's how you know it's good. It's because yeah. both characters are they're like they're friends. They're just trying to do what they want to do. No one's being written out of character or badly. It's just an unfortunate knock-on effect of uh, of what Aaron's going through. I don't know. It's very good. I I think the big like turning point was definitely the scene with uh, with Roz at the yeah. end. New, 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 oh, the the ending of episode so nine. Good. Great scene. That was probably my favorite scene in this. <clears throat> See, that's the, the scene that convinced me. Like, okay, they are definitely setting something up for Aaron to like go down the the evil path and then especially with the the um you know him thinking he did the spinjitsu throw at the end only for Dude. it to have been Sora but of course she's keeping that a secret and then having that lead to like a rift between them for the next I've seen this uh, trope part. before in stories it's not like a new idea but it typically works pretty well and I'm glad that Dinjaga mm -hmm. is like doing it it leads to some good like yeah. emotional like, moments those two things combined together like and, and especially combined with the fact with Roz mentioning the the tournament of the sources or whatever like oh uh, yes totally. having characters fight each other having them have beef with each other i mean it kind of just goes hand in hand we saw it with cole and jay all the way back in tournament of elements so i, I feel think... like they're definitely yeah. going to be on opposite sides uh no matter what 
I think Roz's there. little speech he did to Eren kind of like was like the perfect wrap up for like his arc in that season where Roz goes like, um, oh, if the ninja taught you so much, then why are you like exactly yeah. the same than when we last met? And that was just like, yeah. dang, <laughs> he went the there. <laughs> that like Eren and Roz is one of the first fights in the entire show. Yeah. And then I... you get to this point and it's like, okay, yeah, there, it's like he's getting like thrashed the same amount as he was before. He really hasn't like grown at all. So there is something that I I don't like about that. And yeah. I will say it. And uh, you already know where I'm going with this. <laughs> I know. The last time we met. So you mean when Aaron and Sora like completely bodied you in episode ten <laughs> of season one? Uh, I feel that like that not that's just undercut Aaron, a though. little bit. But yeah, I feel like that <laughs> fight goes is kind of like proves to be more. Uh, yeah, that was a, a mistake. mistake. <laughs> yeah. Because think that about how much more impactful it would be happened. if the last time Aaron was in like direct conflict with Roz was that first time. The thing I is, mean, I keep forgetting about that yeah. fight. So like, that's what like the first time watching that scene, I was like, oh yeah, he's talking about the first episode on the bridge. I think he is. And like, my mind always goes to that because like, yeah, I think that's definitely what they're bringing up, and I because... just keep forgetting that they they did just beat Roz in that one episode. Yeah, it's like my only uh, my only nitpick. They've definitely redeemed Roz since then, which is yeah. one of my worries in part one or in season one that like Roz was kind of underwhelming. He was incredibly um, good this season. I love but him. But the so season, much. like, it, it's almost weird how underwhelming he was in season one because I feel like they definitely could have done more to make him more threatening there and set him up better for this season. Um, because the season they, he just goes absolutely insane. They had a vision that I think they wanted to like introduce him to the audience. But have it be, he wasn't really going all out because yeah. he he was under like Imperium because he wanted their technology. I think the yeah. the in universe explanation is gonna be yeah he was just doing like the bare minimum in Imperium so he can get the Source Dragon power to like then do his actual plan and also his master um was not getting involved in all that stuff because he didn't really care about that right yeah so. I can kind it's a little of get interesting. It, yeah. it, it's a weird story choice, but I, I kind of really enjoy it as time goes on. I like knowing that we're going to be, you know, probably two, three, four seasons deep into Dragon's Rising and still have like Roz be around. I'm yeah. not, I'm, I'm used to one and done villains. Yeah. And I feel like those are the season where they really had to sell them to us and they did a really good job. Oh, we got Honor, Honor Super. That two dollars. Sora beat Ross. Aaron got knocked out. That's a good point. I did forget that. That's that is a good point. That's true. Aaron was kind of useless in that whole fight. Like Sora kind of carried. So, <laughs> dang. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Oof. it's for the so, sake of the story. Yeah. I guess the point stands. You know, the Ross is know right. All that stuff was. <laughs> I love how it just like it kind of recontextualizes everything about season one with Aaron. Like we kind of complain that. He was kind of sidelined, and he yeah. didn't really seem very integral to anything that was going on. And like, it felt, it, it felt like his whole spinjitzu throw was just being dragged out, and like, it was really weird. Like, he wasn't learning it, and he wasn't getting it, and it was kind of frustrating. But now with this season, it's like, yeah, that they did that all on purpose to make sure that this was the story where where he would um he would like come to terms with that and they would completely flip that dynamic between him and Sora on its head where at the beginning he's like the more confident one and he's super excited to like be a ninja and he's like he's all happy about it and Sora's having like struggling with her powers and like feeling down on herself and then they flip it now so that Sora's the one who's really confident and now she's happy with her new life uh, after Imperium and now Eren's kind of like longing for like his parents and like his past and he's like the one feeling down about not being able to catch up now that Sora's kind of learned more than he has. So it's like, it's a really interesting like setup and then payoff here and then seeing where that all goes. It's pretty great. Yeah. That was one thing I was very worried about in like the first couple of episodes is that Sora was like so in control of her powers, uh, even in the mech shorts. Um, because like the last season ended with her um, not being able to do it without Ryu only in that one scene um but it seemed like over the i guess time skip she learned how to yeah. do it but i'm even though i feel like that's kind of like development we didn't see 
it worked very mm. well for Eren's story because she made so much progress and he did like none. I think what they did with Sora was perfectly good because like yeah. my interpretation of like her using her powers was like that was her reaching her full potential, which means like I mean if we were gonna go based on the lore of Old Ninjago, which yeah. I don't know how relevant that is anymore. That would mean she can use her powers by herself now without issue. And like she says, like at the end, she has to learn to do it without Ryu. And I think it's completely believable that she would like get learn really good at it time. because she is just naturally good at tech. It was just like getting past her 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 own issues and her own problems and her own yeah. like connection with her parents I, and like I would have accepting herself that allowed her to use the powers. And now that she knows how to use it, and now that she's like gotten past that then she would just naturally like, I, be really good i honestly would have said for like simplicity's sake it would have maybe been easier to just not have that last scene where she says um now i have to learn how to do it without ryu and they just like said yep after that scene she can do it without ryu that's it uh, um, but that last scene is but, so good though i mean i i personally wouldn't change anything about how what okay. they did with yeah but I'm, I'm fine with that but either way um yeah. whoa uh, <laughs> also, yeah. Ma magic, um, magic. Did you accidentally put another zero in there? That, if you if uh, you did, just let us know. We'll help you out. Uh, but Magic Ninja six one nine five with a with a two hundred dollar super chat. Uh, thank thank you. Thank I'm a little you. stunned. I'm yeah. Just let us know if that was an accident. Um, she says. I will say on the Aaron stuff, there is something I've been interested in the writers doing for a while. Having one of the ninja go Nukinen. Those who are familiar with Naruto may have heard of this term, but this is an actual ninja thing and doesn't necessarily mean turning evil. Well, let me look this up. I think I'm not familiar I with think Naruto. Magic mentioned it in the Patreon chat or I think it's like a ninja who like um, leaves their, their dojo like yeah you know, basically go off and it means runaway shinobi ninja yeah. abandon their village with no intention of returning they are criminals in effect if not before their defection and certainly after abandoning their duties um interesting i mean again that'd be really interesting for aaron because like as ross like the whole thing with ross is he's like telling him that the ninja hold him back and the, they're not making him any any ah, him any better mm-hmm and especially if he has a conflict with Sora and that kind of like creates a rift in their relationship, then, you know, him leaving, him being the one to leave the team is like, would be surprising for him given how I'm a like, sucker. excited he was to I join them. I actually like, I like that idea a lot that it's more of a morally neutral thing instead of yeah. a, like turning evil so thing. It's just, I'm joining Ross. Yeah, I'm joining the bad guy, but, but like, more like eventually I'm, you would get maybe to that I'll point. learn something from their techniques or maybe I'll Yeah, maybe he'd try research on, to... on his own. Yeah. The only thing that makes me skeptical about like him like because like Ross is like straight up he's like in the least subtle way possible. <laughs> if only you had a master that could <laughs> <laughs> like I don't see any other world where he doesn't train with Roz, like, directly. I agree. Um, I mean... But, you like, know, the show is really good at... Crag, like, crag pod theory. What if you train with, like, Garmadon? I mean, Garmadon still... Yeah, but... Garmadon's not, like... Someone who's, uh, like, more morally gray. Whole, is Garmadon evil situation? And, like, <laughs> does Garmadon be able to... Would Garmadon know Shatterspin? Does that make him well, evil? Well... Well, Does he stay know the tuned in the Shatterspin comic to find yep. out. That is true. Uh, that's gonna. I feel like that's gonna answer a lot, or like give us even more theories. It's an exciting. interesting question, and I'm, I'd be curious to see. Uh, I doubt they would go specifically like that, like terminology. Obviously, magic because Ninja Ninjago doesn't have like I mean... strict ninja guidelines or whatnot. But they could do a thing, kind of like what you're saying, where like he's. He's rogue. He's not necessarily evil. Yeah, they use the yeah. term Ronin, for example, for Ronin, um, which well, I don't think they use it accurately to like Japanese history. They, they're not. They, they're not great at using yeah, any of the terms. But they you know? they borrow ideas a lot <laughs> and do yeah. their own spin on. I them. mean, if they do, if they do put in more research in the whole ninja topic and take more advantage of the genre, then that would be very cool. True. I don't know. Uh, I feel okay. like you go on, Josh. 
I was going to say, I have a few crackpot theories, um, specifically about the tournament of the sources. Um, I, I had the idea that, like, if it's about the source dragons and, like, tournament and all that kind of stuff, the idea that Raz is all about strength and, like, Eagles and all of them are all about, like, motion, and there is a source dragon of strength and the source dragon of motion, that perhaps, like, they'll eventually... The tournament could be the source dragons, like, duking it out or something. If they're not all on the same side, which I I don't know, obviously. Um, well. But, I mean, there could be what? different techniques for each source dragon that you know, could be easier or harder or whatever, and Aaron could possibly learn something from the source dragon of strength. Well, they definitely... Yeah, I mean, Little little Aminal had asked a little bit in the chat, who do you think Raz's master is? Do we just I go think to we're the source all dragon the same... stuff now? We're, yeah. I think we're all on the same page, that he's probably a source dragon. Yeah. yeah. Was, and I, I, I would say the source dragon of strength, specifically. Yeah. I th I've, I've seen a lot of people say they think it's the motion one. I don't really know why. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see because like the whole point is that like the dichotomy between motion and strength and yeah. how like the villains use strength because it's easy and it's powerful and the they're, they're, they're pretty much beating you over about, the head like, with it. Yeah, yeah. it's, like, it's yeah. about like patience and like control. Um, I think the 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 Raz flashback scene pretty much makes it very clear where he's like he's the cute baby Raz falling into the <laughs> the little. Uh, cavern in Chima, mean, yeah. and then he says, "Like mm. my master showed me, I had to be strong." So I yeah. feel like it's it's pretty Literally obvious. Learning strength from the source dragon of strength. That oh, we should sense. probably also <laughs> mention this he, because not everyone might even... know this, where the names come from for the source dragons, right? That we only know it because of like the subtitles and the credits. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, because yeah, yeah, this, that is true. There's the scene with Lloyd where he sees like the source dragon symbols and. We only hear the voices, but if you turn on the subtitles on Netflix, they say there's one for motion, one for energy, one for strength, and one for life. The lightning one is energy. energy. The earth one is strength. The fire one is motion. Okay, you guys and gonna have the... you guys gonna have to let me ramble about elements for oh, no. at oh, right. some God. point. Oh no, it's I, time. I, I can do it now or I can do it later, whatever you want. But I have to get it out. Okay, but. <laughs> I, I, I want to talk about the source dragons too. I just okay. I, I yeah, really let's like... let's finish source dragons first. <laughs> okay, cool. I don't know. Oh. I I, just, I really like the, the idea of the source dragons. I, I love how they're um they're setting them up these as these like cosmic level entities yes. that are like because you know when we first when we saw like firstborn for example and it's like this is the first dragon in all of existence and and all that stuff. Oh, well. But it's just like you don't really see it, you know, honestly. I mean, they like, just said maybe, she's the mother maybe, of all dragons, like, right? I mean, that's true, but like, I kind of think that implies that, like, she yeah, it kind of implies dragon, that, but yeah, all dragons. But it, it could just be a title, you know, that's not like actually true, but somewhat true. Um, but I really like the I I love the idea of the source dragons that yeah, there are these just like there are these just ultra powerful beings that are exist, you know beyond any kind of mortal comprehension and they they view time differently than everybody else and it's it's i don't know it's setting up for some really cool stuff i uh source dragons are an interesting thing for me i don't know hey toby, aj i know we've talked before wait what what's go toby made a very funny comment i want to read out um read it can i say i love that in chima all the issues come from stuff falling down the ravine I'm so glad Dragon's Rising kicked up the tradition. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right! <laughs> Thank you, Toby. Uh, the, the, the gorge, the ravine, it's always, it's always the root of all evil. Thank you for joining us today. AJ, I know we've talked many times before about how like Ninjago's lore like changes all the time, and it's like kind of hard to keep up with. Did you, did you like the Source Dragon stuff? Is it working for you? Uh, are you confused? Are you vibing? I mean, yeah, you know, it. I, to be honest, I have not given that a lot of thought because in my head, I'm like, oh, dragons rising, there's dragons, cool, and that's. <laughs> but these are <laughs> like gods. There's always gods in Ninjago. Let's say you know. Not you like know. this. 
But they went like, up another well, level. Cool. <laughs> they're cooler than the Oni. Put it that way. They're like not as lame, you know. <laughs> but AJ, does this mean there might be source Oni? Don't <laughs> don't make me come over there. Don't. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I, I don't know. Maybe, like, maybe like the opposite. Like while the source dragons give power, the Oni like these the Oni equivalent like take them away or something. Yeah, probably. I'm telling you, the end Oni. <laughs> yeah, no, I, like that. I just liked what they did for Lloyd's like characterization, having yeah. him be like on a the, on a very thin line mentally, with like the burden yeah. of knowledge and constantly like freaking out. Lloyd needs a therapist so bad. Mm. He is <laughs> so bad. Bad. Like, <laughs> It's so refreshing to see Lloyd have a story that is like not about Garbodon or Harumi. It's just yes, like a completely that, different that's thing. That's so true. <laughs> like I think it's literally been since like before Sons of Garmadon since we've had that. <laughs> yeah. It's actually kind of insane. No, that's not that's what no, I was gonna make a joke, but everything does come back to Harumi. Even it in like Prime Empire Dude, or Master of vision, the Mountain. One of these visions is gonna come up and Harumi's gonna appear for like a frame. Yeah, he's like, Oh, I'm missing my girlfriend Harumi, who I was in a <laughs> loving relationship with yep. before the merge. <laughs> but also, um, to add to like the to go back a second about the strength um dragon. Yep. Uh rewatching the scene, he does seem to be like the one out of all of them to be like, hmm, pu this puny mortal would yeah. not relate with mortals. He doesn't seem like much to me. Like I don't know. It seems like he, he might be hiding the fact that maybe he does to uh communicate with mortals more yep. than that scene was very that. interesting because you can kind of see that the the soul dragons have like disagreements with each other already. Yeah. This the strength one was very much like, "Hey, I don't care about mortals." The yeah. energy one was very much like, "Don't underestimate them. I got captured by them." <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I like I like that there's already some setup for conflict between the soul dragons, and I think that's probably gonna tie into the tournament of sources, whatever that's gonna be. Oh, yeah. It makes yeah. them like really interesting. We had a patron comment from uh, Aaron Gingerman who was like, "If Aaron is in the tournament, how does that work? Since he doesn't have a power yet, he has a tournament suit." Shrug. <laughs> uh, I mean, he gets you can't just get Sora. a new suit. But I'm, I'm think like uh, I honestly, like I mean, we won't know until the until part two comes out. But like, I honestly like the idea of the tournament of the sources or whatever it's called is like the source dragons is, is like a you know a tournament of all the source dragons um like chosen warriors yeah like yeah. fighting it out because so, like Roz isn't an elemental master either so yeah, yeah i could definitely see him fighting in there it's just odd when they're when they're so like they're like uh we don't pertain to mortal matters and then all <laughs> of a sudden they're gonna hold a tournament where they base their entire you know, winnings I mean, off of what we have no idea yet. To... I feel like a lot of people. Uh, yeah, no, that's just like I don't know if I see it going that direction, but I like I like the idea. I think a lot of people hear the word tournament and think tournament of elements, and yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily what it's gonna be. Um, I mean, even yeah. tournament of the elements was that was just a ruse. Well, even even like damn, so. Well, even like the it, it's called the tournament of the sources, and the sources aren't elements. The sources are like drink, yep. life, you know, all that energy. Stuff. Fundamental forces of like, <laughs> so, yeah. See what you did there. Okay, uh, like, we did um, some we did some speculating in the Patreon chat. Do you guys have any ideas what the others could be called? <laughs> uh, uh, the ones. I like that the weather already... idea you had, Dakota. What? I like the the weather idea you had. Yeah, I, I was thinking maybe weather. weather for the water one, and that way we that could make sense with wind and water. Yeah, that way you could have the water wind together, and it would be like the Wajira maybe one, lightning? I guess. And I was thinking maybe the gold and silver symbol could be balance. Um, and I, I was thinking, I think, but I'm not really happy with that one. Stillness or something well, like that, that for the ice I one. I was thinking that too, yeah. Like the opposite Still, of the ocean. Well, yeah, the opposite of like motion. Maybe, maybe, like, like creation. maybe, um, maybe fortitude or something like that. Like, like yeah, or like peace motion or is something. all about, like, well, like, yeah. while like, you know, motion is all about, um, you know, movement and everything and, like, being on the offense, mm -hmm. um, stillness would be like the fortitude, like defense. You know, being still, not being moved. Yeah, but I don't know. It's it's hard. <laughs> AJ, what would yours be? 
your Nia super fan. Ooh. Pick a source Ooh. dragon name for 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 her power. Hold on, um, Dao in the uh, in the YouTube chat um, said the water could be flow. Yeah, I, I think Monor like mentioned that, that too because it's like that would be like all the fluid elements, I guess. Um, so water, wind, maybe like poison. But I also said like poison could be in the mind, uh, not in the mind, in the life category because it takes it away. Yeah, but there's a lot you could speculate right now with the the sources and elements and what goes where. Yeah, does, does flow get the AJ seal of approval? I like. Flow. Uh, I do like flow because like water, water and wind are both very like yeah flowy. They yeah flowy. I, I don't <laughs> want to use that word, but fluids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I suppose. Can I go on my uh, element Sakona, tangent now? Yeah, I think it's a go good on point. Your element tangent. Okay, I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> so. Long, long time topic here on the Ninjago Cast podcast is Lloyd's power, and for the longest time we had Tommy saying it's not an elemental power and it's not energy, um, even though like a lot of supplementary <laughs> material calls it energy, but it was he always said like that no one in the show actually knows what it is, and I I took that as the answer, and I I actually like that answer a lot personally. Because I feel like energy is a stupid word because, like, isn't lightning energy, isn't fire energy, isn't all of that energy. Um, when Dragons Rising came out, I thought they did a very smart retcon because I thought, hey, they're just gonna say Lloyd's power is dragon energy because they introduced that whole concept of dragon energy, right? So now there's a source dragon of energy, but it's not <laughs> Lloyd's. It's the lightning one. <laughs> and there's a source dragon of life, and that's Lloyd one's. So is Lloyd's element still energy in some way? And if so, why is there an element called energy and it doesn't belong to the source dragon of energy? Oh. I really hope it's not energy now again. <laughs> energy. Do we think energy. they will reveal Lloyd's power finally? Like, is that something Lloyd, that's on the table? I think it's on the table, power, but... If Lloyd's power is life, then it more matches the, um his power in the movie yeah and i i like that more actually i kind of like that We're more closer to it than we've ever been i think now that we had a commentary yeah. on it yeah yeah so i mean especially if there's another tournament like are they they're not just gonna dodge like naming his element like they did last time right <laughs> can, can we talk about the leak too <laughs> you can talk about the leak so we just can't show it okay there, we have there's... a um we have a super chat that's about to go away. Oh, it's about to go away. Brayden, from Brayden I, I mean, Norris, $5. Dollars. But, yeah, okay. yeah, I read it. I think Ra's Master is the strength source dragon. And what elemental powers do you think the Forbidden Five have? Um, I agree with the I first part. I have no idea what the Forbidden Five were. The we haven't even is, discussed that at all. The, so the, the thing is, if there's only ever one master of each element at the time, and they didn't die, right? They were just like in an alternate dimension. It's probably elements we don't know. Yeah, that's, that's what I was That's my saying. thoughts. So, I, I, I think it's impossible. Powers somehow. I think it's impossible. I mean, but da- but Nock used Shatter Spin and so you use Shatter Spin. And Shatter Spin you have to be an elemental master. So. Okay. So yeah, I, it has to be five unknown elements. So it's five unknown, so it's pretty impossible to guess, I think. Yeah. I hope um, it's so, like just really out there stuff. Also, yeah, yeah like I don't know if they're doing more, like if they're doing more elemental masters in different realms and stuff, they could really easily have some crazy elemental powers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I, for one, think they should go from the Bionicle Rakshi Powers Handbook, <laughs> which has <laughs> no. some absolutely like unhinged stuff. Uh, we have. Uh, I'm just gonna read a few of the Rakshi Powers from Bionicle: adaptation, confusion, darkness. <laughs> Anger, city control, yeah. anger, disintegration, <laughs> anger. dodge, control. Yeah. elasticity, fear, fragmentation, hunger, etc., etc., etc. And there's also there's always five levels of each, right? I think so. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay, they, can, like they, they those, can get out there. Some of those names that you just named are like just renamed elements that already exist like darkness yeah. that's a shadow 
Um, I, I, a lot of my favorite are like power scream, molecular <laughs> disruption. Yes, teleportation. <laughs> Uh, limited also... limited in vulnerability. <laughs> oh, there's insect control, right? Yes, what? there's insect control, which is separate from Rahi control, yep. which is like animal <laughs> control. So yeah, Bionicle was weird. I hope they, they do stuff like that. Just really out um, there abstract stuff. We I also feel like... have to consider that we have Wildfire and Kai with fire and heat. So it's yeah. possible we'll see more elements that are like, are like kind redundant. of technically the same thing, but not really. That What's was a... something I wanted to ask about. Let's talk about wildfire real fast. The heat um, thing. Real fast that before, was... uh, we have a super chat from Monarch, $5. Oh, okay. uh, Lloyd's power is life energy or because soul ghosts are green. I, I could I could see something like that, that it's like the life force or something like that. But it's like, at the end of the day, he shoots green power blasts. Green things. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> it's what like... I, I hope they have something oh. good to explain it all. I've seen Lego has used the name energy in more like external media stuff again, and I feel like if there's an energy source dragon and it's not Lloyd, that's just gonna add to more confusion. So please pick a lane. <laughs> Oof. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. And tell us, because we're dying to know. Wildfire officially became the master of heat, which I feel like a lot of people had guessed. Yeah, I but feel like everyone... it's still an interesting point. Uh, how do we feel about it, AJ? Oh. Do you uh, are you are you chill? Are you chill with wildfire being the master of heat? I mean, I I don't know. I know some people are bugged by how similar it is. Really? Like, I I don't. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. It's sort of just like, okay. Like, I remember, like, when I was watching the episodes and they said that, I was kind of just, like... Shrug Ooh. emoji. I don't know if it was even shrug. It was more like, you know when your initial reaction is to kind of be like, okay. Um, like, just sort of a confused, like, fine, sure. <laughs> um, I guess. What bugs you about it? Is it just that it is so similar? It's... Yeah, like, because they, they were saying heat's a different element, right? And I was like, I, I guess, but just it, it just feels sort of I don't know. Like I, I know this answer was coming, but it, you know, it's it's just one of them things. Like, uh, <laughs> so I, 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 I like the idea that uh, the source dragons are what give the elemental masters their powers, and like you know, and they can only have one element per like master because the elements are just like copyrighted. <laughs> and so one of them gave wildfire like fire, but then it's like, oh, I can't give I can't give her fire because Kai's already fire. So they're like, all right, well, how about heat instead? <laughs> Just rename it. To get it's probably that from the law. same source dragon, right? It's motion. Yeah, yeah. I there's probably I, a lot of variances linked in the family. I want to see them show an example of how they are functionally different. Mm-hmm. I mean, they Before did I in season one, it. right? Where they shot kind the cans of. and Kai's, like, well, like, they burned to ash and hers melted. I want, like, a scenario somehow where, like, for whatever reason, like, wildfire can do something that Kai can't. Mm -hmm. That's Melt good. Because as it stands, <laughs> like, they are kind of just the same power. And I, I think that's a how... huge problem. I don't I just, know how like... they would, like, do this visually, but there, it would be cool if, um, Instead of actually producing visible flames, she was just able to like raise the temperature in an area. Yeah. Like raise the temperature yeah. around here. And it didn't like, actually produce any fire. It just kind of So I hate to say I, I I promise I'm not trying to be annoying, but like in Bionicle <laughs> There's <laughs> plasma and fire. Oh. There is a scene in Bionicle where Vakama, a Toa of Fire, absorbs all of the heat. Inside Didn't Lee of a do room. That first? 
maybe but I think, I, i'm remembering yeah. a specific scene in like a book where vakama did it but maybe lee Kahn did he absorbs all the heat in a room and then like the enemies he's fighting like freeze basically yeah. because yeah. there's no heat left in the room yay that's another... something that like wildfire could probably do <laughs> another ninjago <laughs> elemental master who can do ice <laughs> 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 show show me how wildfire's power is like different in a practical sense and i i think i can buy into it more yeah it's just right now it's like they are kind of just the same thing which i'm cool with it but it would be nice if they expanded on that like like why have two of the same power I, if you're not going to like differentiate them i'm totally fine so. with them like being dissimilar i was kind of intrigued by the idea of there being multiple masters of one element but it would complicate things a lot. Yeah, so I'm glad they didn't I, do that. I'm kind of glad I, I they prefer didn't. this outcome. Yeah. Honestly, I was like, really happy. Yeah, go I, ahead, go ahead. I, I, I'm fine with, like, elemental powers being more of, like, a spectrum than, like, just their own things. I mean, like, coal is technically a master of fire because lava is also, like, a source of heat. Cringe! So, you know... <laughs> and also... It's, it's not, Zane is technically a master of water because ice is just yeah. water and vice versa. Yeah, I think it's a so spectrum, like it's so. yeah. I, I I it doesn't really bother me that she, her power is so similar. I don't you know it's it's yeah. heat. I've accepted it. It's fine. It's not a problem. I just I just hope they do more with it. That like kind of uh shows just the value the in having these two powers be mm -hmm. different. I was pretty jazzed about Wildfire in general this season. Uh, at first, my first inclination was to be annoyed that she got hurt, like, at the start. But they did a lot with that in terms of, like, her character and having to learn, like, lessons about, like, patience. And then they leveraged her injury to give her the one to have the, um, the bond with Egalt, where she was able yeah. to, like, get through to him. I like we got hints of his character through her conversation with him. Uh, so I don't know. I found myself paying attention whenever she was on screen during that section. Yeah. And also just some absolutely hilarious comedy from it to like her yeah. disguise. <laughs> like very, very <laughs> memorable moments. So I don't feel like she got the short end of the stick screen time wise at all. I think it was, it was interesting to put a character who's, inclination is just to fight everything and do a long period of time where she can't fight stuff yeah yeah I yeah no the, that was a really good idea the end was a bit abrupt in my opinion where it was like oh yeah now i can work, walk perfectly again uh, i guess relaxing did help and i mean in real life it's more of a gradual process yeah, it, but i mean it was i think they kind of just it did it to ham up the, the lesson yeah <laughs> yeah it gets the point across there that they were trying to go for yeah It's also a bit vague as to how much time they actually spent training. That is true. That's a good, But, yeah. And it's also true. vague as to how severe the injury was. Yeah. Even though they portray it as pretty bad, but, like, it could have just been, like, a, a sprained ankle. <laughs> mm. We don't know. Um, But, I, I mean, read... well, it was, like, making cracking sounds, so maybe not. I want to read one comment from Toby again, and then we have two oh, yeah. for chats. Um. Toby said, I also like her being heard, shows Cinder's power level, and makes the ninja feel less invincible. I really like that fight with Cinder power level-wise, because it kind of showed, okay, Cinder's a lot better than the new ninja. They still have a lot to learn. The real ninja kind of, like, beat him, but then once he uses Shatter Spin, then, then that gives him the advantage. Yeah. So I really like the power scaling they did in this season. The ninja felt very competent, but there's still, like, a threat because of Shatter Spin. So I really like how they did that. It was very awesome. Yeah, and I love how then... Kai just knocks Cinder out like really easily yeah. without the shatter spin, and then as soon as he puts it on, it's like over for him. I love that reference too, with like I beat the previous yeah. master of smoke. <laughs> that was the last one, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's um, so good. Then super chats. Oh, there's another one. Um, two dollars from Monarb. Heat melts, fire burns. That's probably where it's go. Uh, where it's gonna go? I assume. Um, yeah, yeah that's kind of what they did with the cans. I think. It wildfire burned Kai's hair though, right? So yeah, it's, it's kind of already fire. not fully consistent, I guess. But I don't know. Bleh. That's weird. Um. Then magic two dollars. Can we get a Ron two set, please? And I agree. I I feel like you can really like easily make one using parts from like Lego elves. Yeah, and yeah, I feel like the horns. 
I can already see like in my mind how they would be built. So I feel like did they build a model and it's based on a model? <laughs> but yeah. Probably. Um, it's probably a concept cool model. On, yeah. Cool she's like the next wave or something. And then from Davo, oh. 100, I think that's Polish currency. I don't know what the yeah. currency is called though. It's uh, uh, it's $25. Yeah. Quick theory it's... about the seventh symbol. If it's true that Ryu is a source dragon in some way, I think the seventh symbol might be his. Him being born led to new elements appearing post-merge, meaning all of them go under him. That's an interesting that's theory. A, that's a really good theory. I feel Ryu like... irrelevance. Um, Especially because Ryu has like the yellow and crazy. Yeah, going I, on a lot now. of people said like the Ryu gonna be a source dragon theory in the first... I'm kind of like tending a bit away from that because that symbol was in that like little circle when Lloyd had the vision and I feel like Ryu wasn't there, right? What if, um, what if source dragons like reincarnate? What if they have a life cycle? Yeah, but like, and why they... was that symbol in Lloyd's vision, like in that that little scene? And if I mean, if fair enough. I, I was thinking like maybe the symbols are just kind of they've always that's a symbol for that particular source dragon. Yeah, maybe because we, also we don't speak, we don't hear. So. Yeah. Yeah. It could yeah, be. I'm not. I'm not fully sure about that. Like, I feel like it's a it's definitely good, like an interesting idea. I just don't know how plausible. Yeah. I, I just don't know what to expect from this show because, like, legitimately, like, every prediction I had at, as we were doing the reacts, like, ended up being wrong. <laughs> and I love that and so I much. I love that. I mean, I we love were... that because it's, like, so unpredictable. I feel like... We were kind of hoping off recording about the whole Eren stuff that turned out pretty pretty well yeah, with well, the that's, Ross well, scene. Yeah, well, that was, like, a but, gradual, yeah. like... Maybe they'll do this, but that's probably really far fetched. And then by yeah. the end, yeah, this is definitely what they're setting up. Like. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys uh, so much for those, uh, yes. those super chats. I appreciate you guys. There's a comment from Little Aminal. How old do you think Cinder is? I didn't really give that much thought, but probably around the same age as like the original ninja. So, eh, like high twenties, maybe. He looks Mid pretty 20s. old because of like the eyes. <laughs> Thirty um, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, the thing is definitely so, older than the new ninja. Did did do we think that uh, Ash died? <laughs> probably, probably, uh, or passed. or he passed on his that's powers. Definitely, definitely not probably his not son. his son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he might have no, died. Cinder's interesting to me because. Um, I think I wish I could credit the person, but I don't remember who tweeted it. Um, but I saw like a mention or something on Twitter of like uh, in the last scene of episode two, Cinder has like he's just like kind of frowning and sitting there. And mm -hmm. then when the gong of shattering is hit, he like starts smiling. Yeah. Uh and like there's like just the idea that Cinder's like maybe being more controlled by the fact that he's been so like manipulated by the gong there's, itself or the fact that like he's learned shatter spin there's another point and to not that really fully in control of himself in that final scene um he goes like now i'm gonna shatter the last bit of good in my soul or something like that yeah. so he's like he's really uh like and i think he even says like the last thing that holds me back. So he's really like yeah. obsessed with power. He really and like doesn't care. the he design really with like the more. eye bags and everything. Like I yeah. feel like there's a good chance this guy has just completely lost it and like yeah. not even in control of himself. And like that's why he's like here and doing doing all what all the stuff he's doing. Probably. And I wonder if we'll get like how deep they'll go into his backstory. There's, I doubt it that much. There's two things that are kind of like actually three. There are kind of like my biggest criticisms of like kind of stuff the season doesn't really explain and just um, wants us to accept without questioning. <laughs> and I, I like the season a lot overall, but I feel like if the season was a bit worse, we'd, we'd bag on that a lot. <laughs> Which is, where Probably. did the wolf yeah. mask warriors come from? Um, Dude. Where, why did Ron 2 and Eagle turn to stone? And like, how, what happened to Ash? And why is Cinder there? Basically. It is Those a are, testament like... to the good quality of the season. Yeah. <laughs> that I really don't find myself thinking too much about that stuff. Like I even got over the whole like goodness thing, which is was definitely like a complaint I had. Mm. That kind of stuff, yeah. I, I would like answers. I, I mean think most the most thing I'm them... less I'm least concerned about is Ash, because I mean 
Yeah, I think most of them are pretty, <laughs> probably I pretty mean, simple ass yeah. answers. I assume Ash just probably died in some unspectacular way. The Wolf Mask Warriors, I kind of assume that Cinder recruited them, right? Because he showed up for the first time in the dojo, and then afterwards they have the Warriors. I can and... buy, like, the thing with that is that Roz has been playing this for so long, and they show, like, hints of that with them, like, possessing, or, like, uh, what's it, with the scroll worms, he, like, does the spell and all that kind of stuff. So it's, like, obvious that he's been working at stuff for a while, so I could totally believe he just recruited them, like, forever ago, and now... Yeah, yeah now it's, but now it is, he sent out the call. They don't explain time. that, so it is kind of odd. I mean, we yeah. see the masks are in the dojo, so I guess they're they're just normal people, and yeah. he I just mean, gives just them like the masks. Just like one little, yeah. one little line of just yeah. to insinuate yeah. that it he did had bug been, like, me that like all of a sudden he yeah. has an army, and I'm like, when did you have the time to do this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, I think just some little dialogue would have been nice. Just they could like, have even gone like these are the Imperium loyalists he took with him or something. Yeah, just yeah. something as to be like for, this is why they're here or like this. Is as for the dragons turning to stone, that one is a weird thing. There has to be some kind of link between like the blood moon and like the powers of the dragons. But it's why also, would that be the case? Because Jiro and Ryu weren't affected, so I assume it has to be directly because of. The ritual they did to imprison the Forbidden Five, like the last time, yeah. I guess. But yeah, yeah. there was like no it explanation could be like... for that, so. Yeah. And as for Ash and Cinder, like, I mean, I really don't care. Ash is probably dead. Uh, I mean, may, may he rest in peace. Uh, AJ, give us a eulogy for fan favorite character Ash. <laughs> Who? Fan favorite <laughs> character Ash. Master of Smoke, AJ. Don't you remember? No. <laughs> Don't you remember this guy? He fought. He fought Kai in Tournament of Elements. And that's pretty much about it. <laughs> well, he did. He, he had so a funny epic. laugh. He never had a speaking he... line in the show. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone, I feel like that's kind of the fun part because. Some people seem to be quite upset about like Ash just being gone. Why? But I feel like he's like such a non-character. <laughs> like, I'm not upset about Ash being gone. I just like I I'm kind of curious about what happened more yeah. so for the sake of Cinder's backstory. Yeah. Yeah. Mary it would be a really Ash cool backstory. It would be a really cool backstory if Cinder killed him and then got his powers. That would be That like, would be like metal <laughs> because like that, that I hadn't even considered that, like, just being like, oh, you're, well, I mean, I don't know how you determine who gets the power, though. You don't, it's random. I so, know. like, so, I don't know if I can see like... someone going out of their way to, like, kill somebody just for the mere, like, one in however many chance to get yeah. it. Yeah. Mary says, ashes to ashes, dedge to dedge, rest <laughs> in peace. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, brings it brings a tear to my eye. I mean, Camille also didn't show up in season nine. That is true. Uh, Modern said he's the only elemental master had a mini figure that didn't show up in season nine. R.I.P. Camille. Okay, well, that's fair. Back then. Um. There's so much to nope. cover. Yeah. Well. Okay. Here. We're, we're, we're talking about the wolf I mean, mask, guys. Yeah, we talked about Cinder. Should we talk let about Jordana? Just, yeah, no, let me just use this as an opportunity to, to rant about the wolf mask, guys. So, I don't care about the wolf mask, guys, that much. I do, however, care about the wolf masks. Mm -hmm. My my number mm -hmm. one criticism about the season is that I just think it's kind of it's kind of weird to me the explanation for the masks and how they described it. So the masks were in the dojo all yep. this time, unused. Were they used before? Okay. Is there a prior army? This is, I think this is going to be interesting when the Garmadon comic comes out or the Shatterspin we'll probably comic. learn a lot about this. Because you're right. I feel like the comic is called Shatterspin, right? So I assume someone's gonna do Shatter Spin in the comic. I know both. I mean, probably. Um, they said that that the 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 Shadow Dojo has been locked for like centuries. The Garmadon comic takes place forty years before the show because it's in the Serpentine War, 
So the gong is in the dojo, right? So how yes. is anyone gonna do mm -hmm. shatter spin in the gong on comic? <laughs> <laughs> is there another Good way question. to do to remove your goodness? Maybe that's not the gong. So I'm, I'm very interested to see how that's going to work in the Garmadon comic. And I feel like that's probably the best way we could get more info about the wolf masks and all that. Yeah. I really yeah. hope so, because yeah. it does feel like something that was very, uh, for, for being so important, Yeah, I feel like it was not only under explained, but I feel it's like the only thing that was explained in a very like kind of amateurish the, way. I think that's, that's kind of what I meant <laughs> earlier with like, if the season was worse, we would have bagged on it endlessly because look how much we complained about the crystals and crystallized. <laughs> and that's yeah. kind of similar. This is like the whole premise for the villains and it's not very so, much explained at all. Yeah. But yeah. Can the, the, the Forbidden 5 do Shatter Spin? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. They can. Um, the, they probably the shattered of... all their goodness already, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Okay, well, actually though, like if Garmadon got bitten by the Devourer, does that also inflict the same effect? Okay, can, can I talk about my head <laughs> head cannon, which apparently I some people ranting, but yes, you can. My head cannon is that um, evil Nia in season two, when she was taken over oh. by the dark matter, <laughs> did shatter spin because she did spin jitsu, even though the though she hasn't learned it yet. She's an elemental master, even though she doesn't know it yet, and her spin jitsu is like red. Uh, it looks You're different, but right. it looks uh, different, like but that's... it's like the old show animation. But. Yeah, I want to say that's like completely unintentional. But oh, like, of course it is. It's but, probably, I mean, it works. but but like it works. So like I kind of also like I buy it. Yeah, but some people got very upset at me when I tweeted that. <laughs> Why? Why did they get that. upset with you? Theory. Um, someone was like very adamant that Nia already knew Spinjitsu at the time, which I is not Jing. true. T Tommy said but, she didn't. Yeah. Um, but Sakota. And, and some people were like, no, that's not Shatter Spin. It looks completely different. Also, they didn't use the gong. Um, yeah. So. But Sakota, uh, uh, Nia's eyes are purple in that. And, and uh, what's his name? Cinder's Cinder? eyes are red. Yeah. Uh, the purple mean, eyes um... from the, um, from the dark <laughs> matter are stronger the than the red council? eyes. The Crystal Council then should have been able to do Shatter Spin, man. <laughs> Crystal, yeah, they were corrupted by dark matter. Um, yeah, stop no. talking about crystallized. I mean, we don't know if the crystals are dark matter. We still don't know. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. My fault. My bad. Can I say something? You're, real quick? you're right. Yes. Okay, good. Um. So the the Garmadon comic cover that we saw has Garmadon in the um Shadow Dojo. Yeah. So I don't know if it's just like just for covers' sake or if like that's actually going to happen, but. If yeah, it that's... does happen, that means the Garmadon was in the... My the guess is he was, yeah, and that them you. saying it hasn't opened in centuries is wrong, because yeah. they just don't know that he visited it. Yeah, they yeah. probably just, like, never knew about that. He must. But have also, it's, like, sealed, sealing you, it up. so you can op only open it with Source Dragon power, right? But, I mean, if uh, if the first Mitsu Master is related to the Source Dragons and Garmadon's his son, then, like... There's a possibility that he and Wu could open it. Maybe, but yeah, I, I'm really, I really hope it lines up with the comic. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Can I just say that for a while on the stream, and I know I'm gonna jinx it right now, but we've had like over 80 viewers. Yep. And yeah, I just jinxed Yo. it. It went down to 79. <laughs> but that's like that's insane to me. Yeah. Thank, thank you thank all you for, for coming, coming out. out. Yeah. You guys are awesome. I want to finish my rant. So. My issue isn't so much with the wolf guys themselves. My issues with the dumb wolf masks and like the, <laughs> the so like I've been wondering throughout the build up to this season what the the gong of shattering was going to do, and the explanation being that it like it shatters the goodness in your soul bit by bit. I I don't know, just dumb. I don't like it. I think there's <laughs> okay. there's more elegant ways to phrase that, and they did in pretty much every other episode. Yeah, um, but <laughs> we bagged on it a lot in the reacts and joked about it a lot. Um, I rewatched the episodes, and I think I, I feel a bit better now about it because the scene where they introduce it, right, with the shatters the goodness, um, it's the the serpentine lady with the teapot and all the magical items explaining what it does, and it's very mm. much like a comedic scene and. Aaron is like, yeah. do we believe her now? So it's very much she doesn't really know how it works. 
It, um, they kind of sell it to me, especially the lines of it being like, if you believe in that mystical yeah. garbage. So I, I kind of accept it. I think it's actually kind of a smart way to simplify it a lot, but also have it be like in universe. She doesn't really understand how it works. And in the later scenes, they explain it better where it's like it removes the parts of your soul that hold you back and stuff. So I'm, I'm not as only... mad about it but... anymore as I was in the reacts. <laughs> But, like, th there's so many levels of, like, overlapping power. So you only can do Shatter Spin if you're an Elemental Master. And, but you also have to be wearing the Wolf Mask that mm -hmm. also, like, becomes armor. Well... <laughs> if you're an Elemental Master. Mm -hmm. so, but if okay. you're the Furman 5, you can just do Yeah, Nock didn't wear that. the Wolf Mask or the armor. Yeah. Um, and then if you're a regular guy... Well, you can't do shatter spin, but, you get but if claws. you wear the mask, <laughs> you get claws yeah. instead. Um, okay, it, just, it is weird. Like, it is it's weird. Not very well defined. We needed some setup for like where the villain powers come from. Uh, hello, hello, guys. If you're coming back in, sorry about that. Um, we had like a unexpected stream crash, but we are back. The wolf masks crashed your internet for talking about them, little animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't buy uh I don't That's buy the stuff. wolf masks. Another interesting thing about the wolf masks is the uh when Kai, Wildfire, and Sora have them on. And then they ring the gong. It doesn't really seem like it shatters their goodness. It just kinda seems like it gives them a really bad headache for a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but they removed the masks quite fast. Yeah, they so. removed them. Well, they have them on for quite a yeah, bit. But I think that's that's what they're going for, because they take them yeah. off. They also, in terms of the warriors, they do purposely hide the face of one of them when the mask yeah. gets taken off, which makes me wonder. Like in the sets, they're obviously just humans, but we don't know. There's in the more show. to them that we don't know about. That will they? How relevant will they be next season? I guess we don't know. But oh, also, I guess next part. We don't know really. Yeah, but yeah. Also, in that scene where there's the wolf mask warrior without the mask, that kind of had me thinking. In the sets, we have the wolf mask guards, right? That just use like yeah. the regular hood piece. Is up. that just supposed to be? Is that just supposed to be one of them without the mask? I guess. Yeah. I guess, I but know, like they hide the face in yeah. the show, so I feel like. They can't just be human, or else they wouldn't do that. Unless they were just Shrug. too lazy to like add it to the character model, or which have, might like, a be it for like one one tiny scene. I could see why they just didn't want to animate the face or have put on the model. I don't. Okay, we need to we need to switch subjects. <laughs> <laughs> Probably yes. The uh, the gong of shattering, destroying our internet. It's not the internet. Yeah, you know what I mean. There we are. All right, hello guys. We are back again. Don't talk about the masks, okay? You just said it. Don't say it. Don't think it. Don't say <laughs> it. I like a little aminal. You can keep the peace, but not keep the stream running. <laughs> <laughs> we got a super chat from Magic Ninja six one nine five two dollars. Thank you. She says, so what's the bounty wreck count now? Good oh, question. Geez. Okay, can I just say, that was, I think, if we were to have a tier list of all the bounty crashes, that is definitely an S plus tier. When it comes no, to I agree. It was very two. dramatic. It was the most, like, they, they I, actually, I was fearing for the characters' lives. Like, I feel like normally during the bounty crashes, it's just like, we're so used to it. And it's just like, okay, it's just happening. This is the thing. Everyone's going to be fine. Like, when they were like tilting on the rock and it was just like Kai and Wildfire and Sora, like I was genuinely like I was I was at the edge of my seat. Like that was I think that was lingering on stuff. it and having it be like a problem solving thing helped keep yeah. that sense of suspense. Cause normally we're so busy like laughing at a bounty yeah. crash past the point where like it's actually like dangerous. Uh, yeah. but it, it was smart. It was very well was done. done. Very I also good. don't I don't think we're going to get that bounty again unless they. Yeah, that bounty's gone. <laughs> yeah. 
we're gonna expect a new bounty mix that way. Over it the deserves to be gone. I don't like it. I hope the next <laughs> one isn't blue. <laughs> I think it would have been a lot funnier if they just had the middle piece just snap in half. <laughs> Quote unquote reinforced. Yeah. I think that would have been really funny if that was the part that just completely broke. No, they had to I guess I guess they just needed to advertise the fact that it had a reinforced center before making it fall into the ravine for eternity. It also uh gave uh Kai's mech more to do. Yeah. Besides that, that, cool. that, yeah, one scene. Awesome. that scene was cool. Yeah, I, that whole sequence was just really, really fun. And I, I liked the dynamic between like Kai and Wildfire and Sora a lot. Just a fun trio. Um, what now? Someone before the stream went down was talking about like another Zane fake out. And oh, I yeah, guess that does not count that's... as a fake out. Death. I mean, there were two... actually were count. two. <laughs> once with really? where he tries to control the mech, and once when he gets hit by uh, Cinder. <laughs> but I I wouldn't say they're like fake out. Fake know, outs. It's yeah, just I him like getting. I did not think damaged. for a second in the Cinder fight that he was actually gonna. Yeah. Like die or anything. Yeah, I don't. Like... I think that was just for sake of conflict. I feel like if they spent any more time with Zane in the mech and like the episode was focused around trying to get him rebooted again yeah then like it would have been like, a death fake out but it's it like it was really like two seconds of yeah him being powered off and then gondolario was like oh he's just powered down like, he does that just, sometimes i could e i could easily just power him up just say yeah. please and cole's like please which speaking of uh, we haven't really talked about their side plot, like the whole Zane, Zane Cole, uh, uh, Cole Bonzel. Bonzel, yeah. I feel like it was definitely like, like I think if I had to point out any parts of the season that dragged for me in terms of pacing wise, their sections were kind of the weakest. Like a lot of them just felt like they went on for too long or just weren't as entertaining as like the yeah. A plot. Maybe you know, because it's just kind of the B plot stuff that they're doing. And, like, they're important in the climax, and it's obviously important to, like, the stuff that's happening with Bonzel and everything. It was still consistently entertaining, though. Yeah, yeah. it was good. Like, it's, it wasn't bad. It just felt a little bit more, like, dragged out than what was happening in the A-plot. And obviously the character work and stuff, like, after you have the whole Bonzel backstory, like, she's still a fun <laughs> character, but, like, you don't, you know, get the interesting character stuff from there on out. Uh, and then, like, it's not like Cole or Zane are having any interesting character things, which is fine. Uh, it's just, like, it, it's kind of like the... You have, like, the, the, the angst going on in the A plot, and then you cut to the B plot, and it's kind of like the lighthearted adventure. So I think they balance each other out very well. Mm -hmm. Because obviously... I think it was an intentional need... choice to avoid, like, tonal yeah, fatigue. You, <laughs> need, you need that balance of both. Which I think that's both probably what it's best at. Plus, we got like epic, uh, epic new character out of it, Gondolaria. Yeah, Gondolaria. Gondolaria. I love her. Yeah. Yeah, She's this is what you've been waiting to talk about. It. <laughs> AJ oh, loves her. Oh, oh, I've never drawn a character so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nah, I gotta stop. I gotta, I gotta draw this immediately. Oh, I love her. One line of dialogue. That's all it took. Is all the, it talk. the epic crystal ball, dude? Was, she was popping off with that. It was crazy. That always Who's the, the like, person from her past, like Janice. Janice. <laughs> Janice. 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 Oh, Janet. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a a Janet. I want to know. There's lore I, there. I wish to know. <laughs> great character. We don't see a lot of like magic in Ninjago. I was saying, like, there's, like, a few key characters, but they're usually, like, footnotes. I'm glad to yeah. see, like, a really significant... And we got a new realm. Uh, Mysterium. Mysterium. Mysterium, the magic Oops. realm. Okay. Also, we have another monastery there, so um, I think the 16 monasteries that got revealed to us by Feels Good to Be a Ninja <laughs> is definitely a thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> and also, Spark is the Woo Ghost, right? Yeah, for sure. So, so she knows him already. 
I wasn't sure if that was the case, but then like you revealed, you revealed like, Jay. Jay. Yeah. And, uh... They they also do plant the seed for something with the monasteries being linked in some way yep. because like they throw the controller at the wall and it has the mark. The noodle. It's kind of confusing though because the like the Imperial monastery is nothing like. The others, yeah. Monastery. I um, I still continue no, not to effective. not be a fan uh, of them like making the monastery this important thing, but think, I'm gonna wait and see how it all settles before I, feel I go. Like it's on. like a long term. Yeah, I think the long term play is to have like kind of like this this fast travel system through the merged realms. Yeah. Um, because the the monastery was just it was just a place because people get trained at a monastery and then it burned down and that was the last it was important and then it came back because of nostalgia but it doesn't i never thought the monastery would or should have any deep significance to the state of the world or the cosmos or the linked multiversal (laughs) mythos yeah but the the first spinjitzu master did live there He's like odd in a lot of ways, <laughs> so it does make some sense to that there's some relevance to that place. Maybe I'm not like it's totally out of nowhere. Um, yeah. He's also just, like uh, known for going to like a lot of the realms, so it yeah. would make sense he would have a place to you know to do he, that. He used to have yeah. the realm crystal. Oh, yeah, yeah. He used to have the room crystal, and then didn't we then, like, in the tomb of the first Pinsetsu Master, there was, like, all the doors, and then... Yeah, but we never... It was never confirmed that those lead to the other realms. Jay just speculates it in the episode. It's a reasonable assumption to make, I think. Yeah, but there's 16 doors and 17 realms. One of them leads to Ninjago. (laughs) (laughs) But maybe no curse realm door, but yeah. Or maybe, you know, uh, Departed not Realm Cursor. door. I mean, Departed Realm, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I can't wait to get a, uh, a Gondolaria minifigure in, like, 12 years. <laughs> the characters that need minifigures are, like, getting out of control. Yeah. And there's yeah. seemingly no outlet to ever get them. Nope. It's, I mean, it's also time not looking another... like they're going to stop introducing more characters. It's Speaking of another, magic. Uh, Ninjago uh, custom series again speaking of magic we have a super chat from magic ninja 6195 five dollars who says the magic gags they did in the storehouse were so good you're puppy right cold, it, puppy cold puppy, puppy cold, cold. I was just gonna say, <laughs> i'm Man, always adorable cole, cole and zane really were magic ninjas when they uh true by that stuff but um <laughs> i think the, for me, when I first watched it, it dragged on a bit long with all the magic gags, but they I are really does, funny. Yeah, they, funny. they are really funny. That's the thing with the, the whole, <laughs> every episode where they switch that subplot past, like, once they go on the journey to Mysterium. Yeah. Like, every time they switch that subplot, like, I, like the B-plot, I feel like it, every scene kind of does drag a bit longer than it needs to, but, like, it's still entertaining. It's just, like, I mean, obviously I'm not as invested in that story as I am with, like, the main plot, but I feel like there was a lot of time just spent doing like random stuff, which is good again for the balance of the comedy and the time. the balance. So Shout it's like out a to Krusty seven eight three joining Yo. us from the pub. Hello, <laughs> or Krusty. after getting home from the pub, we're talking about how good Dragons Rising is. Although I was complaining about a uh, Wolfman. No, don't, don't, don't say, say it. it. If the screen stream crashes <laughs> now, it's your fault. OBS <laughs> Chat- <laughs> chatter stream. Um, Um, I mean, we kind of mentioned her briefly earlier, but like the entire character of Bonzel being like a spell who survives and assumes like humanoid form, skeleton form, really really clever. Uh, did not remotely expect that. Very (laughs) different. Yeah, I don't think anybody did. Like, um, AJ, did you like Bonzel? A new, I, a new, like, well-written Ninjago female character. I did. I really did. I wasn't expecting the, uh, the twist of it. Like, like just, just at all, did not see it coming. Um, just, yeah. I don't, they had the really good, like, shadow play scene. Yeah, that I was really so cool. That. I have so many screenshots from that. <laughs> I really love um, when shows like. 
divert from their typical style and do something different. It's it's always really nice to see. Um, I know Ninjago's done it before. It's just nice that they're still like doing it because I think it's um, really good and effective and just especially with the new new fancy visuals, like it looks really nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It reminds me what they did in Seabound with Nyad's backstory. Yeah. yeah. I was I was a big fan of it. Did not remotely expect it. Not at all. Um yeah. it's incredibly cool. That and I, I just like what they did with those like those characters in that plot line, although I wish the two kids got more to do. Yeah, and but like Gio, I, wish Gio, I kinda he was do. wish he was with them on the, the I mission. Wish he was on the adventure, yeah. He could he have had even, a really good like. He could have even scene. used his fusion power to save the engine in the Cloud Kingdom, so he would have been very <laughs> useful. <laughs> you are so right. Um, um, let's talk. Go, go, go on. Can we talk about the Wu scene in regards to Bonzel? Uh, sure. Yeah. It, that was oh, such yeah. a cool scene. It it was nice. It was a nice way to integrate the Temple of the Dragon Stone at a Dragonstone Shrine set, but also. Like, kind of cool that she met Wu and he inspired her to get a body. And most importantly for me personally, that they mentioned the Spinjitzu Brothers books, which made me so happy. Oh, yeah, they did do that, didn't they? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I'm so glad they did. Those are confirmed canon. They, I mean, they were always confirmed canon. <laughs> well, you never know with the show. But especially, they mentioned Maze of the Swings, and that's the best book. So thank you for that. Maze of the Swings rules. If you haven't read it, read it. Read it, read now, it. If, only, also, if only the series could yes, get in. Yes, please. If only yeah. we. How about everyone just buys the books now and then they see, wow, people really like these books and we have to release the last one because Sakoda really wants it. <laughs> <laughs> were, it were it so easy, Sakoda? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want them. Um, let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about Geo. Or, or like. I, I wish I could talk about Geo more. He didn't really have a lot of screen time. I liked what he did have. Uh, we can talk about Geode, which is almost certainly I a love thing. Geode. I love Geode so much. Oh, my God. That's I think the, the show, show... Sorry, not sorry. The, the, the show, I'm like 99% sure Geode is a thing. No, no, yeah, it's, it's definitely it's real. More, from the first yeah. scene, from that first scene, especially with the slow-mo on Cole's face, yeah. Yes, they they do a lot of ways to like get it across like non verbally, but like there, there's one really smart thing they do, and I I forget who who showed it on Twitter, I apologize, but it was something along the lines of when you compare Geo's flashbacks of Cole to season one with the actual scenes in season one, they're different. He yeah. remembers moments yeah. differently and like he focuses more on like Cole's face or like the lighting changes to be like more like soft and like warm uh, or yeah. like he holds his hand and he didn't yeah. before. And like that's a really cool way to do it in a way that isn't like super overt. Like oh, I love it. Very, very subtle, very smart, very cool, but also perceptible to people. I don't know. Honestly, I I genuinely, it. I've I've never been invested in Ninjago ships before, whether they be <laughs> canon or in the fandom. But like the way they've just done everything surrounding Geode is so well done, and it feels so natural, and it feels so well integrated. And I just sorry, hope they keep going uh, with it. Sorry, Bruce shippers, you never had a chance. Sorry, lava <laughs> shippers. <laughs> it's also, um, I think what they. It's pretty obvious too with when you see like the interactions from some of the the creators. Um, I think the writer of the original Land of Lost Things episode has liked tweets about them, and Doc has made some references in a video he posted a while back. So I think it's it's pretty obvious. <laughs> we can yeah, no, uh, we, it's, we, we it's can take it home obvious. to the bank. Geode is the ship name for Cole and uh, Geo, because yep. Geode is you know you get it. <laughs> Boy, no. it's pretty obvious yeah, <laughs> yeah. D Dawa was like oh my god we haven't even talked about Egalt, Ron 2 and the whole training arc I just realized Wait, that so yeah, much. there's so a lot to this season about. this season is very dense and like may I remind you we're only halfway through it there's still a whole second half oh coming my god. 
Especially if it's like a whole tournament thing that's happening. Like, what is even going on? Like, the Dragon's Rising era is in, is unhinged with how dense it it's is. Actually and stuff. I'm uh, I'm very happy about it. But yeah, like Bonzel was cool. Geo is cool. Now I will say another complaint I have because you have some. Uh, I was hoping for a bit more from Euphrasia. I do feel she had a really good moment when she like saves the Cloud Kingdom from like destruction yeah. near the end. But I feel like initially she was kind of like the messenger about yeah. the stuff. And I thought that was really fun. And then she goes with them and then just like immediately gets like captured it, again. It's kind of funny like, because well... they just leave her behind. <laughs> <laughs> the cloud yeah. they all get beat up by by cinder and then they just they just dip and leave with euphrasia behind <laughs> i'm yeah, just glad was euphrasia was involved in like the climax of the season no um, yeah i mean she, yeah, she had a good they, moment i hope they do i, I understand and, it's a season. challenge to balance the cast they're yeah. doing a good job they're doing as best as they can it's still a lot of characters yeah. so yeah. We'll, we'll give them time i hope that eventually she will get her time to shine I'm really hoping There's... that if the tournament is like a big, um, like it has like a big cast of characters that she's, you know, she's one of the ones who has a major role. Yeah. Which would be nice. Yep. But I, I think they're also, because we don't really know how skilled she is. I mean, she seems pretty skilled, but like she also didn't beat Cinder without his powers. Yeah. I, I, I think without, she's pretty new. Spin. To it because she had to hide it for a long time that she's but at yeah. the same yeah. time like i feel like i mean this is more so last season but i feel like she's already doing cooler stuff than moro did so like maybe LOL. She's more, oh, no. maybe moro's just a loser <laughs> yeah moro is also really good like competent fighter maybe so, that's uh, why he was never the green ninja <laughs> i'd be interested to see how far euphrasia gets in the tournament of yeah ends up competing if that's even how that's gonna work i don't know my, my my kind of favorite Euphrasia related moment was when the the head monk was like, "Now that Euphrasia has shown herself as the master of wind, which I always supported, <laughs> <laughs> supported from the very beginning." <laughs> yeah, that whole scene was really funny. Yeah, it's like Iconic. one of the highlights of the comedy. Um, I feel like the, that that bit of comedy reminded me a lot of the the giant ham sandwich scene. <laughs> <laughs> we need more giant ham sandwich energy yeah i mean crusty makes a good point like i'm fine with euphrasia's screen time she's basically a tertiary character yeah. she is but like i mean i am the i am the kind of person who like fanboys over all the elemental masters like i wish all yeah. of them got more screen time still i want to see like griffin turner's like character arc i want to see like Karloff lore and i definitely want to see like geo and euphrasia do stuff yeah. Um, Boydo in the YouTube chat, uh, forgive my potentially outdated question. What happened to LJ and Haley? I don't think they were on the live watches either. Haven't watched Ninjago cast since pre Dragons Rising. No problem at all. Uh, it has been a while. You are all good. Uh, LJ is on an indefinite self imposed hiatus uh, from basically anything. I really only got him back on the TTV channel recently because I like bartered with him to do stuff at like midnight because that's like the only time he has because he's working 60 hour work weeks right now. Oh um, and he only came back to do our like anniversary let's play of uh, the Metro Dewey online game. From anything else, Ninjago cast and keep the peace stuff included, he is on lengthy break and uh, will not be returning for the foreseeable future but maybe we're hoping maybe later this year he'll be back uh he has some hope that his schedule is going to get easier to manage um he watched dragons rising season one and loved it but hasn't watched season two yet to my knowledge uh Haley, much longer story but the short version is she is uh, no longer a part of uh, our group or the podcasts in general and she is also on an uh, indefinite hiatus. Um, that's really all I have to share about that. But yeah, there was an Akin J a few weeks ago, I think. Yeah, you're you're correct. He uh, he comes back, but only because I'm like bugging him to. And uh, I don't want to do that too much because he is like suffering right now. But 
LJ will return eventually. From work, not from us, right? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> From work. He's, 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 he's really in a bad way. Uh, but send him strength. He is still alive. Uh, yeah. Um, we mentioned, like, Krusty briefly mentioned how, like, Eagle having dragon cancer <laughs> was a pretty wild development. <laughs> it was a nice little bit of characterization for him, I think. Yeah. I, I love Eagle. He's so cool. He looks so cool. Yeah. His voice is so cool. He's kind of a douche, but he was cool. I like him a lot. I I was fully, with the set, I was fully expecting him to be, like, the old, like, yeah. funny, senile man trope. And but I'm really like, glad they went, like, the fully opposite with it. Yeah, he's, like, this disgruntled old warrior that has, like, lost hope, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. and yeah, but I love how he, like, warms up to Wildfire over time. Like yeah. Their dynamic is really good. It was pretty heartwarming stuff. Um, and I'm glad that by the end of it, he like came around and like had faith in them, only to be turned to stone for some reason yeah. <laughs> that we'll never know. Probably. Uh, Ron too. She was a good character. I know her voice bugged a lot of people, me included. Yeah. Um, her lines were also kind of weird, like that first episode. She, she, but I have no problem with her, but she does not seem like a centuries old dragon as old as Eagle, basically. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think in the beginning, whenever she was like trying to be hip with the kids, you know, it was kind of cringy. But like when she started, yeah, she's the nice teacher. Sound, sounding a little older, it it you know, yeah, it didn't bother me as much. Yeah, I liked her a lot. I also thought it was cool in the training arc how Ryu gets to learn spinjutsu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, they make a and very big deal about and how like, dragons <laughs> and humans are like equal in terms of like being a ninja. Which yeah, I really cool. appreciate it because I think it makes Ryu feel like an actual member of the gang instead of just like a pet or a mascot character. Yeah. Which I think is a nice like refreshing change of pace. I think one thing that was a bit of a bigger debate when the trailers came out, not as much now, is the dragons talking. Um, because the only other dragons we've ever had talking, it was like telepathically. And these guys just like, they move their mouth and talk. But took some getting used to, for sure. It took some getting used to, but I, it didn't have a problem with it, really. Yeah. Once it, like, I do feel show. like, like if I were to go back and watch like Haunted... This will be like really awkward, but like, <laughs> why are some dragons able to and some aren't? Is it like an the, evolution thing? Is it? Like... I feel like My it's only... probably they have to learn it, right? Because the Eagle and Rontu do still talk like in dragon language to each other. Maybe... The thing is, I like what they're doing with dragons in this show, and I think it's overall for like the the benefit of the show. It's great. It does make it weird how, like, you go back to seasons like Hunted that are so centric on the dragons and how important certain ones are. Like, Firstborn seems like such a, like, not important, like, being at this point. <laughs> it's because <laughs> like, the dragon like, no the dragon lore got, anymore. like, power creep. That's the yeah. issue. Yeah. It's just and weird I mean... that it's, like, we, we were at a point where it felt like the dragon lore, like, they were fully expanding upon it. And it was all this stuff, and we und understood it. And the characters understood it, and everyone in the world understood it. But now there's all this other stuff that's like, why didn't we know this before? Why is this new information? Like, it's I agree odd, with you. And it's obviously like retcon stuff, but like at the same time, it's for the benefit of the show. And I think it's improving the lore in a there, lot of ways. There's another kind of world doing, where so I would it's... be very critical of it, but like if Ninjago is going to continue, retcons are inevitable because I mean, yeah. Yeah. None of this, none of this was planned from the start. Yeah, exactly. Everything that's involved in the story, really, for the last five years, has been a retcon. That's just bound to happen when your show lasts this long. Yeah. I think they're doing a far better job with it than some stuff in the past. But admittedly, I am kind of just giving them the benefit of the doubt because I have no reason not to at this point. I'm like, yeah. along for the ride. Yeah, like that's I recognize, like it's it's for the benefit of the show in the long run, and I'm like I'm down with it. It's just it is kind of jarring. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, the Kai and Nia scene in the training oh, arc. So yeah, that was I really good. That. Episode seven as a whole, like oh my goodness, that is like 
That is such yeah, a good Yeah, just episode. firing on all cylinders that episode. Literally, so good. not a single bad scene in that whole episode. Not a single, like, even, like, just okay scene. Like, that whole episode, just one after the other was so good. We had, like, good moments good. between Wildfire and, and um, Eagle. We had the Kai and Nia scene. We had um, the introduction of Gondolaria. We had uh, the J, like, cliffhanger. We had Kai... Uh, you know, doing rising dragon technique and then the blood moon rising. Freaking Ninjago is awesome. Help me, brother. I'm here. <laughs> to Dude, I remember joking like when they were doing the the training, like um, like when they first encounter Eagle and they're doing like the challenge where they're like throwing the rocks and the thing. And I was like, oh my god, they have the shot of like Kai and Nia, like um, back to back with like their elements like inter intertwining. I'm like, this is like hands of time. It was good. <laughs> and then they just like keep doing it like they 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 play on that dynamic and they do it so naturally like it makes hands of time look even worse i, I like, joke yeah all you have to do is just show them like being like like cooperating or like having like a sibling like fight like when they're training against each other and there's like that that short like moment where they're like being like um what you call it they're like uh you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like they're just, they're shown interacting way more naturally in, in yeah. this way that I feel like we've been missing for a while. And a lot of people have been wanting um, uh, and like, there points. could have been more of it, but like, it's, it's really nice. Two points I have about that. I feel like removing Jay, um, lets Nia have mm -hmm. more of a relationship with the other characters yeah. and especially Kai. And I think that's, that's really nice to see. And second, they're really making me like Kai just to, to banish him to an alternate dimension. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Kai, to get more emotional so impact. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. They they everything that Kai does is great. Yeah. Like all all the jokes land, like the emotional moments when they need to, like he has like the wide range of emotions that they need of him for every scene, but like he's also able to just be like a goofy dad to Wildfire and Sora. Or like uh like a just like a a fun brother to to Nia. It's just like it's just I about he's new just dynamics. Doing, he's done so well. I mean we've talked about it with Nia for a while, I remember in in all of our many like sea bound and crystallized discussions, but like the issue is for a long time Nia as a character kind of took a backseat to Jaya the couple. Mm -hmm. And like by the time Jay comes back, I feel like they've done a lot of work on that front. To where, like, now people aren't going to think that way anymore because it will have been like literal years with Nia just like by herself. That's kind of like been recontextualized now. And I yeah, give yeah. them props for that because it shows restraint. I feel that way about Jaya, and I feel that way with like a lot of the secondary characters too that they're not bringing back. Like, they're just having the restraint to like let them be. Don't bring them back right now. Like, Dareth, you know, don't bring them back. Yeah. Uh, everybody, you know, Gale gossip. Don't bring her back. And, uh, yeah, I did just think nice. about like when they did the whole intelligent George bit. If I, I was thinking like, okay, what if they used Gale gossip instead? And like, you you would have of course had like presented it differently. She's not like the conspiracy person, but if it was like more serious news. But then I'm like, yeah, but like, this is fun kind of funnier. Characters. Yeah, and yeah. for new people, it wouldn't matter that it's an old character, so I, I get what why they're doing. It's funnier and it's less repetitive than having the same like yeah. news broadcast joke that we have every season of, oh, Gail is filming something dangerous and Vinny is scared of it. It's like the same <laughs> thing every time. Can we talk about um, what Doc Wyatt said on Twitter about how based on their metrics... 60% okay. of those viewing Dragons Rising have never he watched He deleted Ninjago that tweet. Before. So oh, I don't know if there if, if the data was maybe wrong or anything. So I don't know if we should like speculate from that info if he deleted it. Yeah, I didn't know about the deleting the tweet. Yeah, I I just saw it yesterday because I replied to it and then I saw oh wait. <laughs> the 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 tweet above is gone. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So maybe maybe that's incorrect, but I assume like the general trend should probably be right, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, Generally I would speaking. assume it's doing well considering how the just yeah. like the creators have been reacting to the reception and everything. Like, 
I would imagine Dragons Rising is doing way better than anything that like aired on Cartoon Network, besides maybe like season one and. Admittedly, uh, not a high season. bar. Uh, yeah. Those ratings for Cartoon Network were very bad. Yeah, it's it not like like working. anything like whatever they're doing with Netflix. Like even if it's still kind of flawed with the airing schedules and everything, and it's still not it's, coming out everywhere. But at it's the same so time. much better. Like it is it's not way better, comparison. and I think it's definitely paying off. Like we haven't even talked about it much, but the way they. They advertised the season, had clear release dates again, had posters mm -hmm. and all that. It, it's very well done compared to what happened in the years yeah, prior. They're, they're really pushing the show a lot more, Yeah, which is really nice to see. Um, can we talk about Rise and Dragon technique a bit? Yes. Sure. What's up? So, I, I really liked how it looked, how it felt, and the way they learned it. Um. And I also like how it ties into the whole Source Dragon lore that it's a motion technique. I am a bit worried about if this is going to be another Air Jitsu situation. Probably. Um, because it basically gives the user the ability to fly, right? Which is like a pretty powerful thing. So I wonder if it's going to stay around. And also like Probably only not. only half of the ninja learned it um, by the end of the season. Anything that gives flight will probably very much be a selective use yeah. case. That's what and I've learned. I feel like I... In, the, in in prior years, they were pretty smart about stuff like burst, um, where they put like very, or dragon form, where they put like limiters on it. It can only it be very used in specific. specific situations. Yeah. But dragon form seems to be like, you can just do it, right? It seems uh, like a skill that form, like once you learn. Dragon technique. Yeah, yeah. like I, I am a bit concerned about moving forward, especially if the ninja are going to learn even more stuff mm. like from the other source dragon techniques. Like if they really do go the route of every source dragon has like a technique you can master. Like, yeah, it's just... I, like, how much are they going to use it next season? Is this just the defeat shatter spin button? Because yeah. if it was, that seems kind of disappointing. Like, and I don't know how big of a fan I am of the long-term consequences I of introducing what I'm it. I'm kind of glad about. Uh, I saw a lot of people mention like, and um, that Aaron didn't learn it, even though he has a set, and Lloyd doesn't have a set. I am glad that none of the new ninja learned it. Yeah. Because it would make them quite powerful very fast. Yeah, at least there's that. <laughs> yeah, no, I just hope it doesn't become like a dragons or a jitsu situation. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hinfrig asked, "What do you all think about the mechanic and Fugitive returning?" I personally wish they'd be left in the past, especially the mechanic. They're just part of that old era that didn't need to return. Ultimately harmless. I'm not a big fan of either of those characters. Sorry, mechanic fans. I know you're you're numerous, uh, so I get I get your point, but I do feel their inclusion is is pretty harmless. The yeah. mechanic showing up in like the shorts isn't really a problem. Him having a brief cameo here isn't really a problem. Um, you know, it's fine to do it every now and then. Ninjago has such a like rich back catalog of side characters. I, it's not like I don't want them ever to show up. I guess I'm just glad that they're being very sparing with like their hey, 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 remember this character? Remember this character? Kind of moments. They do it very, yeah. very sparsely. Not character specific, but in terms of things that I do feel like should have been left in the past, uh, when it comes to running gags, uh, the teapot of Tyran did not need Bro! to be <laughs> Please stop doing that. No. It's not funny anymore. Wait, it isn't? I thought it was funny. Do you not think it's funny? I think it's funny because of how overdone it is. I think. But I'm also just really tired of What I will say <laughs> is. I thought we because... left it in the past. What I will say about the teapot of Tyran thing is, I think it's funny. I, I laugh every time it happens, and I get that that doesn't mean that Nauticon's about to come back. But if yeah. you look at, like, comments in, in Ninjago videos and stuff, especially a lot of younger fans take it seriously every time. No, I don't take it seriously. Like, I just... Yeah. I feel but, like we just need to let the gag die at this yeah. point. I feel like hey. it's run its course. AJ, I don't know if I ever told you this or if you noticed it. I know there was the one scene where you saw like a a, a teapot thing and you were like, is that it? And then it wasn't. I didn't say, is that it? I was just like, 
it caught my attention and I was like, oh. Yeah. And I saw it and I was like, you almost got me there. <laughs> but then later on, I don't recall if you ever commented when it was actually shown. It was yeah, shown? The Magic House. Yeah. The Magic House, in, the gondolier is like throwing a bunch of posters. It was in Gondolaria's place. No, <laughs> okay, I, I think that the fake one is actually <laughs> hilarious. Like, the fact that, because the, if they just left it at, like, okay, we have the fake one, and it's, like, meant to, like, nod at it, but it's not the actual teapot, so that's the joke. Yeah, no. Like, it I is actually in her, in, her, it's in her house. She has. But then the real one shows up, and I'm like, we're still doing this. <laughs> so, yeah. I actually, I actually do think it's, like, I mean, I don't want to get too conspiracy theory, but, like, I do believe at some point in the future there is an intention to use not a con. Well, there's definitely an intention to use the gin, which I think a lot of people have forgotten yeah. about. And I think that so long as the lamp exists in the immediate world, at any point they choose to, they could still use it. Um, <laughs> and I feel that it's it's doubly it's funny because you're trolling the audience, but it also reinforces, yeah, it's still around remember I don't, I don't think nauticon comes back but like the gin are definitely going to be important at some point and that still is weird to me because i mean we didn't get any new gin content this season yeah. that, everything that we had at like... last season was great but like when ericor gets to the point where jinjago's back and he has wish powers i don't know how they're going to handle that and i'm a bit worried <laughs> No, nah, I would I, I would be so down to see like Nauticon like done well by new writers. Oh, I'd be so down would... to see Nauticon versus Ericor. I'd be so down for them to release Nauticon from the teapot and then Ericor, it's just like what are you doing? Like this this is my land. And then he just becomes really irrelevant. He just gets pushed <laughs> to the side. <laughs> I'm so That's fascinated, but and one day I want to talk about this, but like <laughs> I don't know in what context. The community's like transformed opinions on Seabound. I find really, and uh, not Seabound, Skybound. My bad, Skybound. Skybound. Yeah, because I, I remember back in the day, like everybody loved Skybound, and the only reason there was not to like Skybound was because the ending made it not matter. And the journey we went on in our podcasts was like we really hated this ending at first, and then years later. Oh, we realized the like the emotional resonance of the ending and how Skybound is great, actually. And now it feels like most people don't like Skybound anymore. <laughs> it's had a weird journey. <laughs> like, I'm not saying. I mean, like, I haven't watched it in a long time, so I can't really like attest to it. I don't think but... it's aged very well. I will say. <laughs> I used to be like a number one Skybound fan. Ah, fan. I don't think it's aged very well. I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say it is, but I mean that's a discussion for like. A I I might have a weird case where I still end up enjoying it because one of the reasons that I liked it was just like I'm a pirate fan and I like the pirate crew. Oh yeah, the so pirate I'm, crew's I'm great. very much like a superficial Skybound fan. I'll say, uh, not yeah. icon good because he is a good voice actor. Pirates good because they're funny. That that's it. <laughs> Yeah, there's really, yeah, a lot general. of really weird writing in that season. That general doesn't make a lot of sense. Speaking of returning villains, what did you think of the Dorama episode? He's uh, so good. I love Dorama. He's okay. Dorama hype. <laughs> that was definitely my least favorite episode, but like it wasn't bad. Yeah, I agree. That was probably like my my least I favorite like Cole episode. But the I didn't giant, hate it. Like... <laughs> I like Cole fighting the, the giant uh, the wooden guy. How some people feel about the mechanic is how I feel about Dorama, where I'm like, he's epic. He's my favorite, like, recurring side villain. I feel like the villain. is just... He's I funny. liked Dorama in his first episode, and then he showed up again in the Lava Tides episode, and I was just like, okay. Okay, this is kind of, like, dragging out. It's fine, whatever. No, and then he shows up here, and it's like, I feel like... Like, the jokes, like, his whole shtick is just kind of worn off for me. I don't know. He just wants to be an actor and have an acting yeah, just... guild. I think it works. Um, I like that they insinuate that they, that he's... Because like at the end, the end of last season, they never captured him. And then this season, they, they capture him. So like, 
You know, I feel like he's not coming back anytime that, you, soon. You say that, but people break out all the time. Yeah. The mechanic yeah, broke out. After like, we haven't seen Cryptarium yet. Next season, they're going to show Cryptarium, and they're going to give like, a bunch of cameos, and then like Durama's going to be He's going to be on the out. Council of the Crystal King. The Council of the Crystal King, <laughs> too. Oh, my God. Dude, I dread the next Overlord season. What else? Uh, We're reaching near the end. Uh, uh, can we talk about I feel the like there's so much we haven't talked about, but I don't think we're gonna get Jordana. To like, I feel like... Jordana! Jordana was awesome. Jordana was so cool. I like how Jordana just becomes like, like a dark magician. Yeah, it was not the direction like, I thought really she funny. would go. That's for sure. And every time, like, um, you know, she like encounters one of the ninja, and she's just annoyed that no one knows her name. It's really I, was, funny. I think it's great that. The voice, they, they I don't know who the voice actress bit. is, but she did a really good job. Yeah, she's, she's doing great. I, I think it's so funny that that joke keeps going on, and kind of like the community reaction was the same when we got like set descriptions for these January yeah. and March sets. So like who? And I'm yeah, just think... waiting. I'm waiting for the scene where she like fights Sora, and like Sora is given a real reason to remember who she is because she's like this crazy dark magician, and like yeah, messes her up. I, I see her journey as kind of like a Spot from the Spider Verse. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm down for. I'm just. I'm. I'm interested. Will are they gonna play out the the trope, or are they gonna mix it up on us? I'm curious. AJ, I know you've had strong opinions on Ninjaga's uh, female character writing in the past. How do you feel about it now? Because we have like a lot of female characters now. I would say more than ever. I have so much to say. Like, I was I was thinking about this earlier. Um, but I I really really like how women are written in the show. Like, I feel like for the first time in like a really long time i've walked away from a show and had like zero complaints about how the women are that's written. so epic that's... coming like, from ninjago well, it's crazy <laughs> yeah it's because like it's it's because the show is giving me like exactly what i want from female characters and it's something i'm always like complaining about it's like giving character like female characters like diversity and personality and just there's something about the way they're written here that makes them feel human it makes them feel like normal people you know because there's often a habit in writing i feel where like people want to write specific traits based on you know what what gender a person is and people typically assign certain things to women and that's always the category they fall under um but in the show it's it, it feels like they're all so different in their own ways and like that's the point i'm getting at like you know women having specific traits you know like the typical ones they have like nurturing or, or kind or stuff like that it's not a bad thing inherently even like being a love interest it's not bad it's when it's the only thing you ever give them if all you're ever writing women as is one specific thing, then that's bad. <laughs> like, yeah. because that, that's not how women work, weirdly enough. Women are human beings, you know? There's more to them than one specific line of um, of traits. And it's just... I feel like when I when I watch the show, I don't have to, like... <laughs> be analyzing it every second you know it's more like i go in and i'm just like i'm just watching them simply be you know and um another thing i'm really glad about is that like i feel like recently in in a lot of shows they they feel the need to you know bring attention to the the topic of sexism whatever and that's that's also not a bad thing it's just sometimes it's nice to it it acts as a reminder a lot of the time you know, if you hear it so often, it kind of just, it can be, it can be kind of depressing, you know, because speaking as someone who's always fighting for those kind of rights and always talking about it, sometimes it's exhausting. It's tiring. I just want to watch women exist and just do things and it not be like a whole thing, you know, like they're just out there doing stuff 
all of the characters' personalities like make sense based on their environment and their past and their trauma and then everything just kind of it works out. Like I look at all these characters and the way they respond to things and they're all different and especially with Nia, you know, like um because in this season you could argue that a lot of her focus is kind of turned on like male characters, right? And like in previous seasons that's been a bit of an issue, you know. But I feel because of how everyone else has been written, it kind of recontextualizes mm-hmm. Nia a bit instead of it being like, oh, like another female character that's just supporting men. It's more like she's a person that cares deeply about the people in her life and can be, can like step up and be there for people when she's needed, you know? Like she's just that kind of person. Um, rather than, you know, focusing on it because she's a woman, etc., you know? Yeah. Um, so rather than looking at, at these women as just, like, women, they're looking at them as people, like, other human beings, and that's what I like. That's... Heck yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I want from female characters. It's a lot better to write characters from the perspective of how would they react as a person, you know, like, yeah. rather than thinking in <laughs> specific, like, roles or stereotypes or any yeah. sort of thing. And a problem that past Ninjago has always had is that the women are often in the same role, doing the same thing. Nothing really changes. I I remember being really, <laughs> really apprehensive of Sora before going into season one because I was like, oh, it's a another woman in stem how many women in stem do i don't need to do all the time <laughs> um but then you know i watched season one and i liked sora and we're getting so many characters that are so different i'm like i it's just nice you know it's great i can just sit and i can watch these women all be very different and have their own different personalities and wildfire's a little gremlin and i love her i was so happy <laughs> She came into the show. I was like, "Oh, I love her so much. She's crazy. Love it." Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you look yeah. at the the I guess new female characters in the season, like Wildfire, Sora, uh, Gandalaria, Bonzel, and Jordana, Jordana, they're like completely different. Yeah. Uh, all have like different well. journeys, different character, and none of them is like defined by a love story like directly, which is something that's. Very rare yeah. in past Ninjago. <laughs> Don't forget Beatrix too. Yeah, I do. And, wanna... uh, and fan favorite character Beatrix. I do want to <laughs> that, like, <laughs> that like um, I feel like love interests especially get villainized as well. Again, it's an issue of it's not a bad thing. Yeah, to have, but it shouldn't like, be the only interest. thing the character oh. does. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. That's but I, you know, it's about so long as the focus isn't entirely on that and if people who watch the show don't only attach them to that yeah. role rather than the other exactly. thing it's like a it's not just a, a thing on the show's part it's how people view women within society as well that you've got to think about like if if you look at a female character and you're only ever thinking about who their love interest is despite all the other things then maybe you need to like reevaluate <laughs> Your, your views on things a little bit because yeah, this is true yeah you know i get you completely and i'm glad that you're having that uh that experience Dude, i, know so you've... I oh, also man. that ending scene after kai was like banished to the other dimension where like yeah. wildfire and nia hugged i really hope that nia is gonna be in like power two gonna be the the mentor for wildfire because i think that could be a cool relationship yeah, that could too. be a really nice dynamic mm-hmm. She's already doing it for Lloyd as well, so I think it would, it would work. Out. She's obviously strange. She does that, like, um, just kind of steps in and helps how she can. And I was of- glad that that was kind of the role of Nia. She's almost like the deputy, like, leader at points. Yeah. Like, she helps, yeah. like, guide yeah. Lloyd along, just how I mean, it has been before and, like, hunted yeah. and stuff. It's nice, though. It's a good trait, yeah. Anyway, and yeah. I- Toby Ekazap, AJ speaking fact, Ice Master. I love hearing AJ talking about this chonky comment for AJ. This is what we talked about in my history of women class the past week, and I agree. Based. Yeah. 
awesome. Yeah, no, it's cool. That's good. Yes, I love talking about feminism. It's like the best thing ever. And I've, I'm it's, glad it's to hear so... you talk about it in a positive uh, cadence. I know, right? Like how <laughs> not the wanting to like die. Yeah, it's not even. It's not even just in Jojo. It's like other Lego shows, but also like just anything I'm watching. There's always something. Like Meso knows how much I rant about like One Piece. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, that's it's like hours long discussions all the time it's so nice to walk away from the show and just be like yeah awesome that was neat <laughs> yeah, yeah no complaints <laughs> yeah it's fun i'm glad yeah <laughs> uh what's left i mean we can talk about the whole final like climax we didn't really yeah. touch on that I mean, everything like, regarding the, the knock and the forbidden five knocked Knocked. Knocked is yeah. cool. He looks cool. I don't cool, care. But... I don't care. I don't care how many people are like, oh, he did like nothing in the finale. He was like, I mean, he's a And I'm like, I mean, if anything, that just shows how like crazy Roz is and how intimidating. He did the he most is. powerful like, form of shatter spin. He knocked out like yeah. five of the ninja with one, yeah. one blast. He, yep. he was the only one to like knock out um someone doing the rising dragon. And he did so it he without the gong it. or anything. He can counter rising dragon, and I think that's good because i don't want rising dragon to be the instant win button okay yeah. those sh those shots of the forbidden five in like that that um oh my god mc escher dimension with so their cloaks cool. on that it, was so it goes cool. so hard <laughs> that's like the hardest shot in all of ninja yeah. it, it was really well done like genuinely the the lighting and the atmosphere like i was i was kind of shocked at point especially when i was Lloyd like was who's like, directing this shot. this goes crazy Especially when Lloyd was like having the visions and he was freaking out. Yeah, <laughs> you would yeah. see like the brief flashes of them. I was like, huh? Oh. They look cool. And I like There's... I think like I think Noct still looks cool. Like I've seen a lot of people comment like his design like is kind of ruined when it's revealed. I think nah, they I do like... look a lot cooler with awesome. the cloaks. But I mean I, they I look get cooler what... with the cloaks because they're all mysterious and hidden. Yeah. But, like I mean I'm fine with, with Noct's design. I wonder what species he is. Um he looks yeah, kind of Oni like, Oni. but I don't know if that's like. I don't think he is an Oni. He's an elemental master, right? I wonder if that's <laughs> like an effect of shattering your soul that you kind of like turn more Oni like. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe, I just think it's I more. Know. I think it's more likely oh, that it's just cool. like from the wildness. Yeah. The species bunch of people, that lives there. The species that. Because I think a lot of people were like, oh, so are the Forbidden Five going to be like. Chima animals. Animal people, and it's like, well, no, all, all Chima animals are are animals that drank chi, regular animals. So logic would dictate that there's probably regular people too in that world, you know. I was I was or joking beforehand that they're gonna be lava tides, but <laughs> <laughs> luckily they're not. <laughs> that would have been funny. So uh, the wiki, I'm looking at the wiki right now for. And um, and one of the trivia things says that his face resembles that of a keeper, hmm. especially with like the the teeth. I yeah, can see I saw it, that. kinda. Because Oni have like the tusks, you know, they have the the bottom jaw. Well, like, the different Oni masks have different prints, and the teeth have that's, different orientations. That's true. But yeah, I I think I subscribe most to the Oni idea. Uh, I yeah, like... I was thinking that like he they're just like a mix of a bunch of things. That could be true as well. Because he has the, the texture on his do we legs know are very Oni-esque. Do we know of Geo being a months on a Geckles because of the merge, or is that just unrelated? No, he's older it? than the merge, so... Okay. Because so, we know he's yeah. Cold's age, so... Them being... There being different, you know, species together could make, make sense. Yeah. I, I really... I don't know how that would work. I'm interested to see, because... The ending we had, like, knocked was very upset that they didn't free the other five. Uh, four, I guess. Um, and then, like, Raz taking control of him with, like, that electroshock device. I wonder if that's gonna go as planned, or if Noct is gonna free himself of that, and Raz is gonna be I would hope trouble. so. Yeah. I don't- I- I- I wanna see some Tinjin in the villain group. I saw a lot of people, like, kind of, like, put off by that ending, because it's, like, different than what you might expect, but, like, I don't know. I think it's refreshing that the five are not people yeah. that Roz would immediately become subservient to. I, yeah. 
it, it would have been so happy about that. It would have been another Harumi in Hunted situation. Yeah, that's what of. I was gonna say. Like, I don't want a repeat of Harumi where he like awakens this power and then it like is worse yeah. for him than it than he thought, and he just looks stupid at the end of the day. Like, he, he pretty Ross much has, is still in control. Raz, unlike Harumi, has built himself up so much to being competent and being completely aware of every little decision he makes. Yeah. To the point where, like, I I actually love how he's just able to easily take control. My favorite Noct. moment, too, not not about Noct specifically, but it was, uh, it was when, like, the plan was going awry and Roz was just like, oh, fine, God. I'll yep. do it myself. He and ran he off. Just, like, he just ran off, <laughs> caught up to Aaron, <laughs> up to beat a up a child. Vehicle. That was my favorite child. scene in the, Took the whole scene. left, bro. Oh my God. It's pretty epic. It was, the it way was he funny like, chases Lloyd on all four. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it was funny because like the during that time, I was like, why doesn't Aaron just drive the car away? And it's like, now Raz would probably just catch up to him. <laughs> yeah, he literally just runs straight. Like, bro is insane. The way it was shot to that scene, like, it, yeah, it has, like, first the shot the... of his legs just, like, running, and then, like, yeah. his 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 teeth. Uh, it's so cool. Like, oh he went feral. It's crazy. <laughs> I, need to, there, I need to check all the episodes to see who directed all these, because, like, every... Oh, my God. There's so many cool sequences. In this I show. also really... Like the Beetle. scenes where Roz talks to his master, like where he just like floats in that like <laughs> so ethereal the space, like, and then is like talking to him. <laughs> that was hilarious. But yeah, I do feel like it was a little ham fisted at the end, where he was just like, "Okay, I'm gonna spew to my master all the things that we're planning on doing, yeah. so that people know." But it's nice setup. <laughs> it's a nice setup like i'm glad we have that info but it's like it did feel like yes master we will do this and this and this i i there's something i didn't notice when we first watched it but i've seen people talk about it so i looked for it in my second watch i guess um that there when jordana closes the portal or when the portal gets closed i guess you kind of see another silhouette coming out and then it kind of like hits an energy blast on Jordana. Yeah. And people are speculating that basically Bonzel was the second uh, unshattered soul. And it basically partially freed the, a second of the Forbidden Five. And that one is like kind of like in Jordana's mind. It's this theory huh. I've seen. I think that could be very interesting. I, I kind of subscribe to that theory as well, I feel like. I feel like that's kind of likely because I mean she's shown like going insane at the end. It's definitely shown that there's something going on there. Yeah. I don't necessarily think they're gonna go the angle of her being like cursed with this like forbidden knowledge and like being like like terrified by it to the point yeah. of insanity. Like I feel like that's a bit too much for this show, but who knows? I feel like it's more likely she's just possessed. I like that we're in a state where we don't easily know what's going on, and there's lots of room for speculation. Yeah, yeah I exactly. think it's fun to see. I, have a, I, I feel like I a lot of this it. has been, like, theories, which is really fun. Because, like, every discussion I've had about this season, like, I don't remember the last time I watched an Injago season, and most of the discussion was about theories instead of just, Everything like, that was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Plot holes, yeah. <laughs> So, like, we're actually theorizing about multiple different plot threads that could be, like, resolved upon. And it all depends. It's kind of weird talking about it because it all depends on how everything continues. But, like, I feel like we're never going to be at a state in Dragon's Rising where we're, like, everything's, like, answered. Like, we're always going to have questions. And I love Well, that's that. the beauty of doing, like, a multi-season kind of a storyline, you know? That, that's, yeah. the, that's the sales pitch going into it. That's what they're trying to do. And it's different. It takes some getting used to. Because Ninjago's never been like that before. But, like, I'm all for it. I'm loving it. It's, like, exactly it, what I was hoping for when they said they were doing this. Because it's, like, I've always wanted Ninjago to be that kind of show where, like, you you watch an episode and you just have, like, a billion questions after that you're waiting to get answered. That's because what, like, so many seasons. amazing shows are so good at doing. Even even the Will film seasons, as good as they were, they're, they're so brief. Yeah. They introduce concepts and then you're already rushing towards the finale before you even yeah. have like time to theorize, really. And a lot like, of it is like the... because they didn't know like how much longer the show's gonna go on, so they kind of wanted to always wrap it up after every season. 
yeah. and now they have the the freedom to plan ahead for a couple of years, which I think helps out so much. I think the closest thing we had to it was like the Oni trilogy, but even then, like, I don't remember. Much the Oni got like downgraded. Much, yeah. This season. All, all we were speculating was what the Oni were gonna be yeah, like. Yeah, it's like, what are the uh, Oni gonna be like? Wah, wah, wah. Kinda, wah. It, like, like the seasons <laughs> leave you on a cliffhanger. That's like one question. It's like, oh, the first round. I wonder what's gonna happen with the first round, and I wonder how Lloyd and uh, Nia and the team are gonna handle themselves in the in the in Ninjago. And that's like all you're kind of wondering. So it's like it's yeah. nice to be like in this position where we're like, there's all these different things. It's not just one single question. It's like all these different threads that could have potentially super interesting continuations. Life is good. And I also think they're answering some of the questions from season one in a pretty good pace. With like, we know a lot yeah. more about Raz's master now. They revealed what Wildfire's element is. They revealed a lot yeah. more about the Source Dragon. So I think it's not, it, it doesn't feel like they forgot about anything important. Yeah, we're getting, like, consistent setup and payoff, and it feels like things are progressing at the same time as more stuff gets yep. revealed. And a lot I'm of it's really character-centric, enjoying. which is really fun to theorize about, because, you know, we always love to see what's going to happen to our favorite characters. So when we get a chance to, like, see foreshadowing and hints of stuff, it's really fun to be like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. It's, it's nice. I am with I you like wholeheartedly. Hands. I think... Uh... We should probably begin like the wrap up phase, unless there's anything yeah. that you guys really want to go all in on. Jay and the administration. Oh yeah, right. we didn't talk about Jay at all. Jay is cool. He's actually funny. I laughed at his at his jokes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, what, you know what? We else did we didn't talk about at all? The cave scene. <laughs> There's so much to this season, but I feel <laughs> like, like there's no world where we could talk about everything in one podcast. The cave scene was really good. Yeah, it was really like I, I love it. I love Aaron. Like I Aaron's I have no idea what Thora's fear is supposed to represent. Personally, I, well, it it's it's supposed it like, to represent. She saw um, like a monitor with Beatrix and Roz, and then shoots like think, lightning. In I her think chest. what it's supposed to be is her being scared of returning to her old life because she yeah. becomes so comfortable in her new life. Um, because it's it's like the thing I was talking about earlier with like the dichotomy between the two, where Sora's so comfortable with being like a ninja in the current life, and she doesn't want to go back to it. It's like her worst fear. But Aaron like longs for like the past, mm -hmm. like his parents, and like he misses. He misses that part of him, or his so, life. For Sora, I also there's a lot of Beatrix teasing going on. Um, in, yeah. in Lloyd's visions too, with that weird blade, and I I think Understood. it's very smart how they explain the visions with them being like because the, the sword strengths uh, perceive time differently. They're potential futures, so it mm. could be like a red herring, which I think would actually be maybe quite smart. But there's so much Beatrix. Maybe they have more plans for her. I think well, she didn't die. Back. She's out there somewhere. Yeah, and we don't know anything about Zeatrix and all that, so there's a and lot we never could will. still do with her. I, yeah, I want to know about Zeatrix. We will never really know do. anything about her. We will never hear her name mentioned again. Please, I want Mark to I want more I want know. I want to just not... show up in the tournament. Just I just want to know what her element show is. Up. <laughs> it's like, no. oh yeah, we freed Zeatrix, and she's here. She's trapped in the dungeon. They can't just set up something like that and never do it. And <laughs> then the next vision, Aaron's right with his parents being like disappointed in him and I love not searching Devin for Mac him. Devin Mac's performance there was really, really yeah. Good. yeah. I, I, I really like the idea that they set up that Aaron wants his parents to be proud of him when they reunite. Yeah, that's such Dude, a that scene like, when like. When he's, like, on the ground after being, like, destroyed by Roz, and, like, he sees Lloyd and Nia, but he thinks it's his parents. Yeah. And he's just, That's like, sitting... So like, that, that was, like, so sad. I feel so bad for him. Yeah. It was really well done. And then... Um, we didn't see the... Kai's <laughs> or Wildfire's fears, but I think they... Uh, Doc confirmed on Twitter that Wildfire's vision was that Heatwave has, like, the dragon ill. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. She like starts saying the name of it and then just like goes never mind. 
That's why she's like all freaked out. I have and no then, idea what Kai's could be, to be honest. I, I feel like it I want to say like losing wildfire, but like or I don't or know he saw the future of the like him being stuck in the the MC that, Escher oh, dimension. That would be so interesting. I would like to have Kai show like a crumb of concern for like Skylar and where she might be. Yeah, but that's maybe. Just me. I feel like that would be ill placed though. Sky <laughs> Skylar is one of those characters that I do think like but show up she, again. She she needs to be more present. She always did. Because it's if you're supposed to buy that like I she is like I know we just had the whole discussion about female characters and like love interests and stuff, but like if we are to buy that her and Kai like do have a relationship, I think maybe a crumb of concern could be warranted. Because yeah. like Zane's mentioned Pixel and me is mentioned yeah. Jay and like Kai's just like living his life. <laughs> not, yeah. not, not caring. <laughs> Kai's just a single parent over here. Yeah, come on. Yeah. True, I haven't even thought about that really. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> and then Nia uh saying like, Oh yeah, Jay would never forget me, except I love did. that so oh, much. Well. But it was so cool that, that like she was the first to get out of the vision because of that, that so but we all know yeah. it's like that's exactly what's going oh, on. That's such good foreshadowing. <laughs> and especially like Yeah. Cannot wait. Once we are get you hyped? Jay, are you hyped to see it? I'm always hyped for it. Always. Uh, the Jay I the the Michael Adams Wade's performance in all the Jay scenes was really good. Yeah. I love how he delivered the the line where he's like, this job's really rulesy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, just something about that delivery is just really funny to me. Yeah. I remain very interested what they're going to do with Jay and how they're going to incorporate him going forward. We learned like a crumb more that like he's not really he doesn't really vibe with the administration and he so knows not, he like, has lightning brain powers and is choosing to conceal that because yeah. he doesn't want people to know. Doesn't want to do the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that how much of him we'll get in the next ten episodes. Yeah, my theory is that that is why they made the choice to like send Kai to the shadow realm. Because when they did the first, it. like, the round table discussion about Dragons Rising, about how they were going to do, like, rotating casts, like, this fits the bill, you know? Yeah. Did Kai out Ka bring Jay in? Especially if, like, we have Wildfire, so it's like, they don't need to fire people in the tournament. Even yeah. if it's not necessarily going to be element-based. Yeah. And then I imagine that when... Kai returns, it'll probably be time to say goodbye to, like, Zane for a bit. That's my guess. Yeah. Oh, please not. I wonder if Zane and Cole stay, like, <laughs> yes. Zane, Zane has had, part. like, the least out of everyone. I would honestly, Maybe after Cole. this season, I would hope that, like, Lloyd is Lloyd gets a break. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'd be down for it, but I think they consider Lloyd to be, like, the main One teacher of the main for characters, the yeah. new... Yeah. I think it would be Kind of fine for Cole to have a bit of a break that he just like goes. Yeah. To his the, break the... was season one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I feel like Cole. You could very easily say he's spending time with like the. To me, like gang. Cole adds a lot when it comes to the found, like the finders, and I think his story with them is really nice. Yeah, but, but in I terms feel like of the grand if... story. I feel like Cole doesn't really add much. Yeah, I really don't think he needs to be like a character that appears very often. That's how it's always been. We've always had that discussion yeah. about Cole. Like, I like really Cole, been. but I feel like out of all the ninja, he's like the least important in terms of the show. Like, I, I don't think, think he needs to be here if, in most seasons. If they have a story that doesn't really have a place for the finders, they should leave Cole out for that season, basically. Yeah. Like, this, it was it's good here because he was like with Bonzo the whole time and it was really yeah. nice. But like, Last season, he wasn't really needed. He just had that one episode to, like, reintroduce him and show what he's doing, which is cool. Like, this season, he has the plot with Bonzel. I wish Geo was a part of it. I think that would have made it a lot better. But, yeah, I mean, you never want too many characters, right? So it makes sense. Uh, next season, like, I don't know what he's going to do. Like, if he's going to even participate in the tournament. I think it'd be fine if he just didn't, like... I think it'd be fine if he was just not a part of what's going on. But we also don't really know what is really going on. If, if they so. are smart, they will leverage Cole and Nia as really big people in the tournament arc because of Jay maybe being 
part that of it. True, yeah. yeah. Because those are their big like links. Um, that would be smart. I, I did forget about the fact that we still haven't seen Cole and Jay interact. Yeah, yet, you and so. you and everyone else, because most people forget that they were best friends. Yeah. Because, hey, they because bring it up again like this season <laughs> too, which is like okay. Like, it's probably reminding hopefully, people for that reason. That's a reminder for yeah. But Jay I generally hold me yeah, too. Giving giving Cole a second family is a good excuse to just like bench him yeah, when yeah. it's not like relevant. It's hard to say because we don't know where the story is really going. But I'd say like after season two, like I feel like Cole just doesn't really need to be in the show that much. But I don't know. I like I feel like out of all the ninja, like he's the the one that should be not as relevant. I certainly agree. And, and I like Cole. Have. Like he's top three for me. Like in terms of favorite ninja. So it's because he's like I hate though. Cole. It doesn't mean that he has like a lot going yeah. on. He just doesn't have a lot of relevance, and I feel like in this season especially, he's just kind of there. Like even I, Zane, like Zane got a lot of laughs out of me. I thought Zane was yeah, really funny. So this Zane, season. they had some, they have a nice interactions with him and Prohiki all the time with the yeah. little, <laughs> plushy too. And, and anything then they with Zane had in the administration. administration stuff with yeah. them seizing him oh, as man, equipment. So those are all funny, but there's no real like character development or I arcs hope or anything like that. And I think for Zane, it's been the longest since he had anything anything substantial. So yeah, because like, Zane feels something. like he needs something <laughs> yeah. the most. Because like we got, I think the issue we got Kai, is so like I I really just and I mean I've said this for a long time. I don't think they really know how to write Zane. Yeah, I don't think I've, any anyone really has. They they because are treating when, him when, when he's like a robot. They're like, okay, well, what can we do with him being like a robot? We can either do robot jokes or we can write a story where he gets reprogrammed, you know, and we have like the Ice Emperor. I don't think they really know what else to do besides yeah. that. I think they're doing the robot shtick uh, too much, even in Dragons Rising. Um. So yeah. I hope they they get more a bit. I'm mixed. I'm mixed on it. Cause like Zane, like being a robot, is obviously an important part of his yeah, character. Yeah, of course. And like when that's his only personality trait, it's kind of like it's it's weird. Cause like Zane has a wider like range of emotions, but I feel yeah. like I feel like here he's really like he's he's acting like more as a person he just has funny robot sayings and he like he like has a personality i feel like here where he's just like yeah he's really smart but he's also very invested into everything he does yeah so like with the administration when he gets taken even though he knows like it's evil and it's like yeah like not great. he's still yeah. he is, he's like, still proud of his work <laughs> yeah he's proud of his work and i think that's just really charming and i think it's fun i, I do like how he's characterized i just think some of them make him look a bit too robotic um, and not as like, yeah. I don't know. He's still like a very compassionate character too and a very like, I don't know. He has some very human emotions usually and they don't really show that as much. I think the issue or like one issue is Zane doesn't really have a lot of like strong bonds with people. Um, He has one with Cole, which is why like, you know, he was with Cole here. They've had a lot of scenes in the past where they've done stuff. But, like, other than that, well, it's cool. They, and, uh, Dane and Kai also work very well a lot of times, especially, like, Master of the Mountain. But they, they don't really have a lot of screen time together in Dragon's Rising. You know, it's not like Zane. I mean, he's friends with everyone. He's part of the group. But, like when you think of like interesting character dynamics it's like okay so cole and jay are like best friends and nia and jay are like in a relationship and kai and nia are sisters and lloyd and nia have like relied on each other a lot like in the past and cole and zane have like hung out and zane and like pixel are in a relationship but that's really it for zane you know also and his personal bodyguard <laughs> yeah zane has like Zane hasn't even had like any reaction to like Aaron and Sora like being there, <laughs> or Wildfire. Yeah, I just don't really think they really know what to, to do with characters. And I don't think they. I mean, they 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 had an idea with the Ice and Bird. It backfired so hilar hilariously. We got another super chat from Sharnak. Twenty dollars. Don't have Charnak. time to watch. I do have a confession, I guess. So 
Uh, I forgot to smash those like buttons. May this humble offering earn your forgiveness, masters of pod. <laughs> well, thank you, Shardak. I appreciate the reference. I think you he is forgiven. Smash that like button. Like it's yeah, it's, it's very it's very very kind of you. Um, feel free to catch this on the replay. We have to edit the three yeah. separate stream pieces into like one vod, but we'll hopefully have that up like tomorrow. Yeah, it might take a bit because streams take a while to compile on YouTube before I can download it. But yeah, we'll we'll get it up soon, either tomorrow or the day after. You know, it, it'll be up. Let's do final thoughts. Wrap up. How about? Yeah. Um, we'll go like one by one. Uh, we'll just say what we thought in general. Um, AJ, you go first. What did you think of this, like collectively? What are your like lasting thoughts as we as we close for the day? Uh, it's good. Yeah, keep it up. Yeah. Epic. That all, that all you got? <laughs> are you Are you getting tired? Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> That's reasonable. You don't have to say anymore. I'm just glad you you were happy enough about it to want to be here. Yeah, the sugar we'll crash for part two. Come now, so. That That's okay. You talked yeah. about the the, the the feminism bit. Yeah, I've done my part. I'm gonna sit here now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. oh, for. <laughs> Josh, what did you think? It was incredible. Can't wait for the next part. Genuinely, like I don't know. It, it's. I'm gonna be honest. Like my um, investment kind of went down a little bit, but uh, really? it's like very yeah. I mean, I, to the I, I'm not really like that much. I just haven't really thought about it, or like theorizing or anything like that, which is something that I usually do. That's fine. Um, do you know but, if there's a reason why, or is it just like? Happening? I think it's just because I think it's just because there's so much stuff that introduced that it's just hard to wrap my head around like everything. Yeah, it's fair. Um, like I don't even want to like get into like the whole dragon hierarchy and all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. It, it's just so much is it, unknown. It, and we're yeah. waiting to learn. Yeah. And, it's and I don't, really... I don't even know how to begin like theorizing about that kind of stuff because I know that it's probably gonna like, especially with the fact that it's you know it's a multi-season story that like stuff's gonna get revealed. So like I might as well just kind of go with the flow and not really like make too many big head cannons. Yeah, that's fair. I get that. But I mean, I think that's a, I think it's pretty good. Like just or a pretty good thing. Like having a multi multi-season story play out like that and having like so much stuff that you get introduced um and having the time to answer it all it's it's really good epic sakota extremely happy with hard one so far like i'm super excited to see where it goes all the production values are insane like the way it looks the way it sounds the music the voice performances everything and there there i only have some minor nitpicks of like basically unanswered questions about like the wolf mask warriors and stuff like that mm -hmm. but nothing really that's like i guess affects any of the character arcs affects any of the narrative stuff and i think that's the priority in a lot of ways and i'm overall extremely happy this is if part two is good this could rank very high in my dago season rating I think I like it more than I like like part one of season one. Agreed. And, um, like the the pacing was really good. It never felt like boring. There was always interesting stuff going on, and yeah, I'm just overall extremely happy with. Or. Binda. See the thing is like, I don't want to sound hyperbolic. But, like, I really, really, really like where Dragons Rising is going. Like, season one, I have really liked. But I was like, in terms of old Ninjago, I don't know if I'd put it in my top five necessarily. But, like, it was really good. Like, A tier season. But, like, I don't know. Like, I think this so far, this first 10 episodes is in, like, my top three somewhere. And you know, as like with the whole season, that could change with part two, obviously. 
but I don't know. I just have like I have so much confidence in this show now. Mm. Like, not to say I didn't in season one, but you know, I wasn't sure how they'd continue things and continue to write things and expand upon things that had been established. After this season, now that we've gotten a taste of how they plan to continue things and how they continue to set stuff up and the the traje- uh, trajectories they're taking the characters in, I'm very, very happy with this. And I think that this could be like the start of like a really good set of seasons for Ninjago. Like I'm I'm very confident in it. Which is scary to be this confident, obviously. Because there's always going to be, like Meso says often, there will always be in the day of the future when the show disappoints us. It's inevitable. Things just have bad well, days. You know, yeah. it, it'll happen eventually. It's it nasty. will happen eventually. There will be a season of Dragons Rising that I might not like as much as the others. But for now. But right now, <laughs> I'm absolutely that, loving that it. That means and whenever I, you do, I'm you have to enjoy it, it get even more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and the fact that this even exists, I'm just really happy. Yeah. I love it. Everything about it. Like, so, it's, it's great. Here, here's the thing. Um, normally, like, I'm like Mr. <laughs> Mr. Nitpicky Negative Man. And I mean, like, I did have some stuff this season that definitely did, like, kind of make my eyebrows raise a little bit. Not a lot. Not a whole lot. Um, hold up, super chat from World of Cars Entertainment, four ninety nine. Continuing to delay the stream. <laughs> nice callback. <laughs> That's a callback to the other day's uh, two TV podcast. Uh, wish I was able to be here for the whole thing, but stupid work. Love y'all's work you deliver for the community. That's incredibly kind of you. Uh, be sure to catch the the vod. We'll have it up like recompiled in a few days after like the stream crashed a few times. Um, thank you for stopping in while you can. I appreciate it. Um, to, like, I'm fully aware of things like recency bias. I'm fully aware of things like hype, hype culture. Like, eventually cracks can show, and eventually things that maybe were good at one point become less good in retrospect. I mean, just take a look at the Skybound discussion from earlier, especially now when we don't even have like the whole season out. But you know, just so I'm aware, stuff could change. I don't want to go like too crazy. Uh, right now, as things stand, I'm going to actually be that guy and I'm going to like plant a flag in the ground and I'm going to be like, uh, I like this better than the Oni trilogy at present. Yeah, I, I am. That. I am. As time has gone on, I look less favorably upon the Oni trilogy. And not to say it is not good, specifically Sons of Garmadon, I think should be credited as like saving the franchise. Mm-hmm but so is this by all yeah. respect and like okay so what do we got here we have dragon lore and relevancy to the foundation of the universe we have a collection of different bad guys uh, like uh, an ensemble cast of like villains threatening to like challenge the heroes we have a time skip reestablishing a new status quo ancient like mystical arts lore of like the universe coming into play reshaping our understanding of how things work Uh, a ritual where people are summoned from like a different (laughs) dimension culminating in the climax of the season sound familiar there's a lot of the same dna here and uh it works better Roz and cinder and like jordana are better than Mr. E, Kilo, and Ultraviolet. You take I'm that sorry. back about Mr. E. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Raz is better than Harumi. Raz is better than Harumi. Raz is better than Harumi, and they're definitely better than Kilo or Ultraviolet, but come on, Mr. E, hello. Mr. E, Mr. E, Mr. e is Ultraviolet's Mr. E is, awesome. Mr. E is just fight scene fodder. Ultraviolet is just the crazy one. Kilo but doesn't Meso, have a personality. Have you considered so, that Mr. E looks really cool? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> yes, yeah, so does literally every villain design in this entire show so far. I like, but I have like you considered e. that I like Mr. E more? <laughs> <laughs> I like Mr. E too, don't get me wrong. I'm right there with you, man. Uh, and like, I'll always love those seasons. I'm not saying they're bad. But, like, there are things about them that I do not think age well. And I think that people look up, look past them a lot just because of, the, like, the hype for the Oni days. Um, 
in terms of like pure execution though i mean some of that stuff rubbed me wrong back then if you go back and listen to our podcasts i was saying like man i don't know harumi's character kind of went off a cliff after game of masks and never really recovered man the moment that garmadon came back the sons of garmadon really got like upstaged man kilo and ultraviolet kind of suck man it really would be nice if mr e had like a character or a relevancy or anything and it's very clear he was gonna be echo zane and then they changed it which i'm still bitter about to this what if what if mr e is from what if mr e is from mysterium oh my god (laughs) I don't know like, why. It's kind of crazy when you consider that Dragons Rising already has more episodes than you than the entirety of the Oni trilogy. Yeah, yeah, it is. And like, I mean, just just part one. The reason I make that comparison, by the way, is not just because of its thematic relevance. It's also about like screen time, because Dragons Rising season uh, season two so far is equal to Sons of Garmadon, and then season two will make it equal to Hunted. March of the Oni doesn't really count. It was like four episodes. So I feel like reasonably safe comparing the two. I like the new bad guys. Uh, I like the lore. I like the Oni and dragon lore too, don't get me wrong. But like this lore is fun. The fight scenes, really good. Cinematography, (laughs) really good. Lighting, really good. Character arcs, also really good. Sons of Garmadon, had a really good character arc for Lloyd and everyone else. Eh, not really much to speak of. Yeah. Um, Pixel, ironically, I would say, came off second best to Lloyd. Yeah. That's been season. hunted. Sons of Garmadon, yes. like Sons of Garmadon, because a lot of people refer to these seasons, right, as as like darker in tone. And I think, like, Sons of Garmadon set a weird expectation in the fandom where it's like, oh, for a season to be, like, dark and interesting, it has to be, like, about death. Because that's what Harumi's whole backstory was about. It's like, oh, her parents died and there's consequences. And that was great. And I and I love Game of Masks. But, like, it's... There's so much more you can do to make a story deep. Yeah. And, like... I think Dragon's Rising, not only in this season, but in the last season with the Sora's whole arc, just really proves that the more nuanced like character stories that you can have without you know making it about like what the the fandom has considered you know to be deep i mean we we had this discussion on your stream the other day bendo because like i was one of the ones who wanted like someone to die from the ninja crew always and i feel like a lot of people want it because of the dark element i never really like that wasn't specifically what i was ever angling for in all of our discussions in the ninjago cast what i wanted were I wanted consequences and I wanted status quo shakeups. And death is a really good way to shake up the status quo of a main cast because people react to that and people act differently when a puzzle piece is removed. If Dragon's Rising has taught us anything, you can do that without having to necessarily kill characters. Yeah. Because yeah. they've done that and everyone's still alive, probably including Wu, because he's still doing things. He's just, like, not a part of the active cast at the moment. So I'm getting everything I wanted. The reduced cast size has led to a refocusing on the core characters while still having a lot of really fun secondary characters that people love, like Mr. Frohickey, like the, 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 what do you call them, the snake people, the hydro whippers, uh, like the salesman, like Hydro Whipper guy, he was cool. Like Dorama, who you know your shtick might wear out for some people, but I really like him. You have all these people, and you have a redoubled focus on the core cast with mystery and speculation and multi-season arcs. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 gonna say it. It has potential to be my favorite season, but we're gonna have to yeah. wait and see. Yeah. It could fall I off. I don't want to be too hyperbolic because I, I I thought I was going crazy by saying top three. Obviously, for me, nothing's gonna top Super. Yeah. I also held back from saying that, but if if I'm part not. two pulls it off, then I'll agree with you. <laughs> I'll feel free to have egg on my face if later. Part two is great. That'll be my second favorite season. I'll say that. And I will say something we should do, and it's dangerous. We should avoid raising expectations too yeah. high. Yeah. It's why I'm not going to get overly attached to the Aaron villain arc thing, even though I really think that it would be cool. It's because there's other stuff that could also be cool. 
Um, it doesn't have to be the only thing. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. It's a surprising place to be. It's a really cool place to be. Ultimately, I think that I'm just happy to be in a situation where I trust that it's going to be good. And it's just a question of how good is it instead of like, oh, yeah. is this going to be the year where everything falls off a cliff? You yeah, know, like I'm pretty confident, even if they don't do everything we're theorizing, like I almost hope they don't because you don't want it to be too predictable, right? Like, yeah. I almost hope Aaron's story goes in a way that like we don't expect because like I said earlier, like this season's done a really good job of just like, like uh, making, like just kind of subverting my expectations. That's kind of what I'm yeah. hoping with the tournament too. I feel like I, I kind yeah. of hope that it's very different from tournament of elements. In a lot of yeah, ways. like I feel like we're all clinging on to this idea of what we think it's going to be because yeah. of our preconceptions on what a tournament seasons look like in the in the past. But like in in the back of my head, I'm like, it's not going to be that obvious, though, right? Like, yeah. there's got to be more to it than we that we don't understand. So that's to be that's fair. I think it. that even Tournament of Elements did a good job of subverting what a tournament arc is typically yeah, yeah. labeled as because there was a deeper like it was all a lie. There was like a ruse. Because it going wasn't on. really. It was like. It was like just a master plan for yeah. Chen to get. It was a way to lure people into the same spot, and I have a feeling that it might be a similar thing here, where like the source dragons are lured into the same yeah. spot. My but only I hope is it. that they use it to like. I think the reason they're doing a tournament now, is my prediction is that they're using it to heighten the conflicts between characters, primarily Aaron and Sora. I think whatever they're doing with this angle is going to be used to create a lot of fun dynamic switch ups that are going to make conflicts a lot more interesting and a lot more flashy than they would be otherwise imagine like, the end of the season we get jay back but like aaron leaves the team yeah and, like, like what 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 better way to have characters like angst out and like be mad at each other than to literally have them fight mm -hmm. like it's, it's it's also a good good way to to portray the character conflicts in an action show if you have them yeah literally exactly fight. yeah yeah and so. judging by how gorgeous the, the action looks in the season, I'm very excited. Like, yeah, combining gorgeous action with really well emotionally like done scenes. Like, if that's the angle they're going for, I I, I buy into that as well. But I mean, we still yeah. don't know. That's all I got for now, though. I just wanted to say that you know we'll have to see when part two comes out. Hopefully, we don't have to wait too long, but probably at least like three to four months because it's probably going to time with the summer set release. But there's still going to be a lot of Ninjago stuff coming up soon. Oh, we got yeah. the Garmadon comic. We got the set pictures probably sometime soon. So I don't think it will it's be good, boring. Good time to be a Ninjago fan. Please, please, please let Garmadon or be Shatterspin be a better thought out integration of the show. Because like, I, I, I really want that to, to fuel theories even more. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, and I want the right. lore to line up. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, we will see. but they Please. said they were in talks before, and it's canon. So I'm I'm confident they have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they said last time. So we'll yeah, see. I have more confidence though. All so. right, that is all for episode 81 of Ninjago Cast. Thank you all for sticking through, even with multiple like stream crashes. We're still ending with like 51 viewers, which I think is pretty epic. Uh, thank you all so much for coming out. Um, thank you for all your generous super chats, for your questions, for your feedback, for your like commentary. Uh, stay tuned over the next three days. We're going to be releasing the final three Ninjago cast reacts. And then hopefully soon we'll come back for more Ninjago cast because we have some non Dragons Rising related subjects to discuss that I think would be pretty fun. Still kind of related to Dragon's Rising, I guess, but there's a lot more Ninjago stuff to talk about. And uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I have been your sensei, Meso. I've been Sakoda. I'm AJ. I've been Josh. I've been Bendo. And the dojo is now closed. We will see you all next time. Have a good one, everybody. Goodbye.